Okay, three, two, and one. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Battlefield Show. Uh, I am here with a very special guest, one of the leaders of Synthic Game Science. My, oh my, they're back. And I, I can't believe they're back. My God, how you doing, uh, Mr. Incarnate? I'm, I'm hanging in there. It's good to be. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's really great. Thanks for doing the show today. Um, you guys have a huge announcement just a few days ago. Sim.gg has returned. New, I like, hey, what a great URL, huh? <laughs> yeah. That is wonderful. Yeah, yeah nice it, little it, GG in there. So you're one of the leaders here of, uh, one of the team leaders of SimThick and also from uh, one of the leaders at your SimThick Discord as well. So, um, and also a geographer in real life, yeah? Yep, that's uh, what I went to college for. That's what I work on now. We'll uh, see if I keep doing that in the next year. I don't know, but uh, for now, it's what I am. <laughs> cool, cool, man. Well, um, I want first major question is where did you guys go? What happened? Oh, oh, I, did, did we even go anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. So, um, a while ago, like right before BF5 launched, we had a issue, and I'm not quite sure exactly because I wasn't really that involved in the website at that time. Mm -hmm. Um regarding uh, something between us and curse and i i believe it might have been something to do with like the european privacy thing that was going on around that time uh, um but whatever it was and i'm not still not 100 percent sure i've never bothered to follow up with that uh whatever it was either a curse end or our end um we just the, the site went into like a freeze state or like nothing else could be added by curse so we decided to just let it be as it was and mm -hmm. uh maybe like three four months ago we started working on sim.gg so that was our process going forward from like august or maybe july and we just kept working on that me and two other developers and that brought us to sim.gg where we are now we launched back in uh, november 2nd so we're about a week old now week and a half and uh, we did slim down on the site a bit there are some things yeah. that aren't there that were that used to be there some more like superfluous data stuff that just kind of was not not critical to what you know something needed to to provide so we cut down that stuff put up the weapon charts put up the comparison page and uh, you know general information that isn't made clear by games and that's kind of what we're focused on right now so we'll expand that as time goes um simthic.com will remain as it is always right. and forever nothing else will ever change there again at least and not it's, the an it's, it's, it's an archive it's right? yeah. Yeah, okay, it's an archive yeah yeah it's archive so you um, got... and, and you can find it on like web.archive or whatever that, you oh, know, that, that internet time machine. So some of the pages might actually still work through that, but mm -hmm. most of it has broken just because it required uh, an actual live, you know, server, which doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah, I remember I went there. I was like, wait, didn't they launch a new website? And I had to go dig in and then I found your discord right. and there it is. Sim.gg. Go check yeah, it out. Um, yep, yep. But on simthic.com, you still have uh, data uh stats from bf3 bf4 are still on there right yeah so there there is some three and some bf4 and uh hardline star wars battlefront mm -hmm. uh some of those other titles are still on there but the pages may or may not be broken depending on which page you go to it's just like comparison pages might not work um oh, okay. or some and of the, the images might not load but uh, we're working on getting some of that data back over to sim.gg so stuff like bf4 bf3 um uh, those are like more priority than other games so obviously if it came out more recently bf4 for example we would do that before we did bf3 because there's probably more of a community for bf4 than there is bf3 at this point um and other stuff yeah. like star wars battlefront would also be something that we would want to do before we did star wars battlefront one or mm -hmm. some other title um, just because there's more people playing you know the, the more recent video game title so why did you guys decide to come back what was the whole initiative to have a whole redesign uh, and everything so the redesign was done because we wanted to avoid any potential legal issues. Not that we thought gotcha. there might be any, but just in case there was, better safe than sorry. Um, so we just wanted to, you know, play it safe, get a new domain, get a new name, and a well, relatively new name, but new, new appearance, and just not reuse anything that we had previously, which wasn't too hard. It just, you know, you got to start somewhere. So that, that was the hardest part is just getting that. Um, and coming back was more of an issue of just deciding to actually want to do that. And I right. It's one of those things where you have to have the right people at the right time willing to do the right things. And one of our devel developers, uh, Robenter, he uh, mm -hmm. had actually previously done his own version of the, the Simthic site. And you can find that, I think, at Robenter.com. Yep. I don't know if he's still updating that or not. Um, but it's we there. Pulled him in and yeah. said, hey, we, we saw you. We, we, you saw your work. 
you know, would you be willing to help us remake Simthic and, you know, put those charts on our site? And he was more than willing. And, you know, we've all done this out of the, you know, our, our own free time. There's no compensation for this. We don't even run ads on the site. Um, that yeah, site is hosted clean. by, you know, old Simthic. So it's, uh, it's, it's something that we've just done over time, you know, through passion and, and just effort. And I think it's because we, we, we know there's still a demand for it. And, Battlefield it is a title that has had some ups and downs in terms of community. So, mm-hmm. you know, like BF1 had a, had a huge increase in player base, but it yeah. was also a different kind of appeal than BF4, BF3, and BF5 has gone in another different direction. So I think if Battlefield tends to stabilize, you know, it'll it, the Synthic site will see some more use again, and it will, will be there to support that use um, now that we're back. It and is... hopefully we'll cover some other titles in the meanwhile, while Battlefield oh, figures itself absolutely. out. Yeah, SimThick is one of the most important tools for content creators out there. I mean, they've been begging Dice forever just to have what SimThick develops on official channels. Like, it's yeah, crazy. You're, you're telling me. I mean, yeah. I got some tweets here that I, I, I can show you guys here from Drunksies here. He's, I quoted him here. I would love to make that easily viable for all players. I don't think having to visit an external website such as yours should be needed to understand weapons basics. And a, a lot of yeah, people, yeah. even like Westy agrees. He's like, I think it's something DICE should consider for the core dedicated players out there. Um, right. It'd be a brilliant QOL update, a quality of life update for the game, giving players more info so they can uh, make more informed decisions. I mean, I absolutely absolutely 100 yeah, agree it, with that it, it's something that you know i would this this sounds very self-defeating but i would <laughs> i would love for developers to put that in and put us out of business because you know or pay you. players shouldn't have to go out <laughs> yeah, or pay or that's fine too you know but <laughs> it's, it, players shouldn't have to go out of their way to find out what really happens in a video game you know it it, it seems counterintuitive right if you if you mm-hmm. don't know what you're doing in the game and it's just kind of vaguely described to you in like a one word or, you know, a, a five sentence word, five word sentence, yes. or you, uh, you, you, you just get these bar graphs that don't bar really tell graphs. you anything. Pointless just like, oh, bar gra- with no numbers here, at all. Here's a bar graph that has no context to it. And maybe here's a number on a scale of one to 10, but it doesn't actually represent actual values in the game. What's the point? Like, yeah, you can maybe compare them to other things in the game, but you don't have, you have no baseline to kind of compare it with. You know, like, oh, you don't have hard doesn't... facts, hard yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, it's it seems it seems silly that to, to to do something so arbitrary and put all this effort into these arbitrary systems when you mm-hmm. can just do the real thing, which is in the files, which you guys know exactly. Yeah. Why not just do that instead? And instead of working some superfluous system that to, that just kind of vaguely gives the information, they were kind of going in that direction with battle log. Um, yes, they yeah, start yeah. putting some information in there, like to have an external official website um, where people can get that basic knowledge. But like, you know, we're below basic in game here in BF5. I mean, uh, well, it, 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 least, at least they show like the actual rates of fires. That's a great at thing. Least, That's great. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. But uh, I mean, but, uh, yeah. every every uh, time content creators were, I mean, back in the day, every content creator used your information right um, i remember yeah. to I, promote a new weapon that is coming in every time and uh when they want to do weapon comparisons now it's kind of hard to do that here in bfi i there's some people on there uh, um i forget his name but there's a great youtuber out there that does weapon comparisons all the time mm. but he just goes off of his own data um right. Not like, you know, it doesn't go off of uh, actual number statistics. It's just, it goes off of more visuals, you know, sure, like the, sure. here's a spread, but there's no numbers there. It's just, you know, this specialization will reduce right, spread, right. but he's just showing pictures right. and whatnot. Um, yeah, and, now, and there is, there is yeah. some merit to that as well, but, cause, you know, yeah. it's good to have the data that you have yeah. presented, like from the game files and test that in game just to make sure that it's, you know, what's happening in the files and there's no like secret modifiers or something mm-hmm. that you don't see directly but yeah it just it's it's extra work for these content creators and they have to go in and test everything one at a time <laughs> it 
you know, it, <laughs> again, that's just another layer of, of making more additional confusion for everyone involved instead of just the developers being straightforward with what they're doing in the game and what their weapons do and what their equipment does, whatever it is in the game. It's extra. Yeah, dude, if you ever uh, want to check this person out, I found him, um, Guitar Soul here, one of my mods on chat, uh, put the YouTuber's name on there. Uh, I think it's yeah, JI3, yeah. Fantastic okay. stuff, Wait, right? Goes through the, every... uh, I, I think I've seen this channel before. Let me, yeah, I'll check mm -hmm. the link. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, yes, I've seen it before. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. He does yeah, good yeah. stuff. I mean, it's yeah. it's not like numbers, but it, I think he does a very good representation of exactly what happens. Like I, I I've what seen you're gonna see the charts game. before. Yeah, where like he shoots to the wall and he takes the dots of the bullet impacts and compares them and overlaps them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's is good visual information. So have. now a content creator like that can come into the weapon chart area here on your website. I'm showing it right now. And mm -hmm. what's really cool about this, like let's just start with the AG, the M42 here. Um, what's cool about this, it, it, I mean, this, this harkens back to BF4 stats. You got the graphs here. You got all the crazy numbers I barely understand. But it's all there. Everything in a perfectly right. nice UI. It's I mean, you got ADS time speeds. You got um, the hit fire reticles. Uh, I don't know. Looks like there's a lot of information on spread, which is pretty big right. in this game. And then it's, on the yeah. right side of that, you have the specialization trees, which is great because now you can just click on. I would say you want to do quick game. Uh, custom stock, quick, quick reload, and then light in stock. You can see the before and after effects of just ADS right. spread, yep. and um, and and all the charts are updated. Everything RPMs updated, and then you can start comparing all these weapons, and then you can now make an informed decision of right. what you yeah. think is going to better fit your play style, or just you know make a video comparing to um guns you know yeah, and just so, just having the data there to back up your you know what what you think is happening or just to represent you know that that okay here here's two guns that do different damage values now we can show this you know as a, as a video on on the internet you know and just having that baseline to just give people raw information to help them prove exactly what's happening in game is happening you know behind the behind the scenes as well it's just something that you would think Dev developers would want people to do, you know, and, and to be able to do, but I digress. That's why we're here, you know. <laughs> That's fine by me. We'll do this for the time being. Uh, KHT120 is in here too. Oh, yeah. Uh, KHT let's... was our, uh, our, uh, so if you go like the, to the weapon mechanics page, he wrote a lot of that stuff for us. Um, he's got really right. Good yeah, the basics. Like, this is all perfect. Yeah, this so should any, be in the game. That weapon mechanics, uh, so if you keep going down to like at past the general multiplier, actually, no, no, he started the general multipliers, all that stuff down, all the like the, the numbers there. He, mm -hmm. he wrote all that stuff out. So spread increase, idle spread, um, all that groovy stuff he, he wrote out there because he's uh, he's a data number nerd just like me, but I think he's even more so. But he, yeah. can, he can say that for himself. <laughs> oh, it, also, if you guys want to find the website and where we're what we're looking at right now, just go to sim.gg. And then at the top, there's the um, the the battlefield data, battlefield five data button. Click on that, and uh, or just hop into battlefield five. It says it right on the homepage. Yep, right on the front page. Yeah, it's a little fast and travel button. And right now, yeah, right now we're in weapon mechanics. We're gonna go through all the features of the website first, uh, just so you know, content creators out there or just people who are interested in these kind of statistics uh, can really use these features to their advantage. So right now we're just in weapon mechanics. And I mean, this is right, right, right away is things everybody should know <laughs> to see with the certain strengths of certain weapons or. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Like one of the, know. one of the big ones right there that you're yeah. looking at selected semi-automatic shooting. So this is a huge thing that, that BF5 implemented. And I don't think BF1 did it, but I didn't play much of BF1 or I did, but I didn't like bother to do anything in depth with it. Um, but in this game, you have the ability to switch to semi-auto and okay. you will get less spread, less vertical recoil, less horizontal recoil, and less pattern wow. strafe left to right on your recoil patterns, which is amazing because that makes semi-automatic fire, you know, past that range where your gun might not function too well. It functions very well. You know, you, you can extend your range and, and fire at rates of fire, you know, not as fast as what you maybe you're used to with that gun, but you can still tickle people accurately. 
and do God, consistent do you, damage. Do you know if the semi-automatic shooting was a thing in BF4? Because I feel no. like it was. No. It wasn't, huh? Wow. Of my knowledge, at least. It could have really, so. really used it, for sure. I feel like some guns use it, but again, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it was. Otherwise, you would have put it on the old well, Simpsons so, website, right? So, B, no. So, so BF4 had a, a, a variable called spread or first shot spread multiplier, which was um, something that on your first bullet of every shot, you would mm -hmm. get a multiplier applied to your vertical and horizontal recoil. Or was it just vertical? I forget. It's been a while. Um, but it, okay. it would increase your recoil on that first shot. So, like, the AEK had, like, a three times multiplier. It was insane. So, your gun would kick three times more than it would on the first shot. And so that okay. made semi-automatic shooting very hard to do. So mm. maybe that's something that that's been removed in Battlefield Five, which is why it, it feels so much better in BF Five. It's because the, the first shot multiplier just doesn't exist on any guns. The variable is there in the files, but no gun uh, first shot multiplier, which is really nice because it makes every gun feel like you can you can get accurate at range on the first few shots, and it makes your semi-auto fire feel even better because you don't have that first shot constantly getting a fsm multiplier constantly and, constantly i mean that's that's great information even for casual uh pub players and really good information for anybody trying to get in the competitive scene which we almost had here we'll cover that um later we'll on the show started. we can get started on that later <laughs> yeah once we'll, i get yeah. rolling on the stop <laughs> let's let's stick let's stick to the website here so people can understand what's going on and see the important information so selected semi-automatic shooting and its benefits is a new thing here for Battlefield Five. To correct? my knowledge, yes, okay, yes, to okay. my knowledge. I, I might be mistaken, but it's been a long time since I looked at BF Four or uh, BF One. <laughs> but I believe this is a new feature for BF. There's no melee stats. Are, are uh, there many I, stats? I, I, okay, I can put that on the on the GitHub right now. I'll put that there as an issue. Um, yeah. So melee stats. Uh, as far as I know, with the like <laughs> melees, of course. Oh, so this is something we can talk about. We just touched on this. Uh -huh. Um, there is no like BF One had a had a melee system, right? Where it was heavy or it was light. Uh, that still exists in BF5, but it is stated nowhere in the melee weapon. So you have heavy and light melee weapons in the game that do like 34 damage and 25 damage, respectively yeah. for 34 for heavy and 25 for light. But the game doesn't tell you, it will not tell you. So that might be something that you know a player might want to say, hey, you know, maybe if I'm shooting a guy with a revolver once and that does 50 damage, I want to do 50 damage with a heavy melee and just kill him. Great. Well. You know, if you if he accidentally <laughs> picks a light melee weapon, he's gonna uh -huh. have to stab him twice. Why not tell yeah. the player, you know, what he's what what he's chosen <laughs> will impact his gameplay. They're but gonna it's, have it's, to figure it out. Right? I, yeah, they just <laughs> the they're gonna process. get punished several times before they realize, oh, this knife actually doesn't do anything if I wanted to instant kill this guy. Yeah, information it's, not being told to the uh, a general player is yeah. a huge issue in in, in chat right now. It's element. Uh, he just confirmed that element. the new. Uh, yeah, it's. It the, the single shot semi-automatic thing was not a thing in 3-4. He was previously a dice dev and has been with Synthic for years at this point. He's older than I am Excellent. in terms of Synthic years. So he is, he is the guy among, among many other men who has been a core foundation of Synthic for God knows how long. Since cool. at least BF3. Well, thank you for that element of progress. Del Taro, welcome back, dude. Thank you for that. Uh, it's good to see you, everybody. If you guys are just joining in, I am with one of the co-leaders of Simthic, uh game science i like that little tech i know right it sounds so fancy <laughs> they just released their new website they are back you got everything people sim.gg remember all this stuff all the youtubers used to you know copy and paste and put it at the bottom of their screens it's back now for battlefield 5 you got all the the uh, spec trees you got all the damage, uh, data charts, everything. You can get comparisons. You can move these around. It, it, the UI is super friendly. It, it's a lot to take in at, at once, but um, it's there for anybody's needs. So we're just going through some of the features here uh, for the Battlefield 5 section on sim.gg. We're just looking at weapon mechanics. And right now, the selected semi-automatic shooting is a new feature that has been uh, introduced into um, Battlefield Five, and I mean this. Go I mean, I know a lot of SMGs don't have that uh, semi-automatic, semi-automatic mode, right? Uh, I think all of them do, actually. 
they all have the semi? No, I don't I remember. All semi, yeah. Actually, so one thing that happened a while ago that was really interesting. Oh, yeah. uh, I think the Thompson at one point did not have it, so they gave it to the right. Thompson, mm-hmm. and they forgot to set a limiter on it. So the fastest oh, you can no. shoot when you select when you select semi-auto is 449 RPM. So that's like basically 450. So if you shoot, if you click faster than that, which is like 7.5 clicks a second, yeah, I'll do. Uh, it, it won't, it will not let you click any faster. It'll limit that. Uh, the Thompson didn't have that limiter, so you could shoot at 900 RPM and single fire with all of those benefits of semi-automatic shooting and laser people across the map with the Thompson. It was fantastic. Of course, you know, shooting, I don't know what how many clicks that would be a second, like 15 clicks a second, is really hard to do for anyone, especially if you're using a controller. Um, but it was just something that didn't. It was just bananas. So it, that is it, that kind of just showed how good that that ability was um, of of all these d- different like reductions on your on your gun. I mean, when you so when now, you shoot at 900 RPM and you're shooting a laser yeah. from a, some machine gun across <laughs> the map and you were sniping people, you know, it yeah. took a whole mag because the damage is terrible. But that's not the point. I mean, it was it was amazing. I mean, now that we're on this uh, topic right here, are there any guns that are I don't know bugged right now? That are not enabling what you were just talking um, about. No, I don't think they so. Patched KHT that, might right? be able to catch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they patched that. That's that, that was fixed like in a patch or two. A KHT in chat it might be able to, okay. to specify something. I don't think there's anything that's particularly bugged right now. I think maybe the PZB, the Panzerbuxa uh, AT rifle, might not have a rate of fire uh, mm. spec that's working. I think that might have just broken their most recent patch, but I had to look into it more. Gotcha. But no, we were, we were having display issues on our site, and we thought it might have been our site, but we think it's actually the game now. Well, we're not sure. Well, that's good. KHT says there's nothing, nothing is bugged right now. Yeah, uh, okay, so which is probably nothing's bugged because I know which he's is very, great. very much <laughs> except the Flieger Faust. Yeah, the Flieger Faust is a whole another thing. <laughs> I don't, oh, it, it's, God, it's working uh, as intended right now. It's working as intended, but I don't really? think it was intended that way. But whatever. That's that's not that's neither here nor there for <laughs> us comedians to decide. Working guys, as intended, but nice maybe knowledge. not intended. Okay, gotcha. Figured that one out. Okay. Uh so again, like a lot of players should start using the semiotic automatic feature, uh change the firing um mode. Uh do it a lot, especially yes. if you're using specific guns. That can't get that uh, long distance um, yes damage. No. Yeah, so it's one of those things where if you're using, say, it depends. Uh, it depends. Yeah. If you're if you're using a 1907, you know, the on the assault rifle class, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can do decent damage at range and tap fire people down and still, you know, not feel too bad about yourself because you'll still have ammo in reserve. But if you're doing it with an SMG and you yep. deal, I think, 11 damage at max range, which is 10 bullet kill, don't bother. Uh, you know, it, you you may as well just save your ammo because you're gonna get attrition on ammo because you you get like you just wasted at least ten bullets on a kill if you're hitting all body shots at seventy five meters, whatever it is. Um, it's not gotcha. worth it. You know, save your ammo, use your smokes, push up, kill them at close range with four bullets, take the ammo, make a profit on ammo. Um, yeah, and the Beretta, uh, a lot of people are talking about that right now. Yeah, when yeah. it first came out, I, that's all I people talked about. Yeah, well, this is this is one of those things where like. Yes, it's good on semi, and that's only because people didn't want to use the burst fire mode. But if you're not using the burst fire mode, you may as well not even be using the gun. Because an M1A1 has a better semi-automatic rifle Right. overall. It does you know, a higher, the same rate of fire in semi-automatic fire, except that it gets a bigger magazine. You have no horizontal recoil because it's not the, it's, none of the SLR, SARs have any horizontal recoil. So they're all laser beams at any range, provided you can compensate for a little bit of vertical recoil. Mm-hmm. It's it's just an all around better gun to use in semi automatic. So the only niche the Beretta has is using that burst fire mode. And if you're not using it, you use another gun. It's silly, right? And, uh, and there, what about the uh, like the Sturmgewehr as well? I mean, uh, like, which one? The, the STG or the one five? Uh, the one five is the clicky boy, right? What do you mean clicky? Like the like you just makes, it's single sound. fire. No, this is not the not. What's the automatic one? It's just that's the STG. So there's the, yeah, there's the Sturmgewehr one five, and there's the STG forty four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's right. there's there's two that look almost exact. I think this is a G one five, is the the one that's semi auto, and then there's oh, that's, that's the, just the Gewehr one five. Yeah, that's okay. Gewehr one five, and then there's the Sturmgewehr one. Yeah, the, Sturmgewehr the, 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 
the basic one. That one's the automatic fire one. Yes. Now yeah, I ripped out front. Right. So if you change that one to single fire, um, do you get somewhat of a close like benefits that you would with the G15? Or I mean, I'm no, just no, not really. Okay. I mean, so it's again, it's not bad if you put it in semi auto if you want to hit people at range, but the G15 uh -huh. does better has better specs for you know range shootings it has no horizontal recoil because again it's, a, it's an sar so it has no horizontal so it's easier to shoot at range it does more damage it gets yeah, here. about the same specs i it's uh, if you're going to use something for strictly semi-auto fire you may as well use the g15 you, you have no reason to use it. and in fact khd will you tell compare. you this time and time yeah. again the only assault rifles that are actually relevant in this game are the m1907 um otherwise you might as well be using a semi-automatic rifle um, it just does everything better past 50 meters. Okay, yeah, I'm comparing these two now. So, Gewehr 1.5, uh, quick game. I mean, what do you guys recommend for the uh, uh, Gewehr 1.5? For stars and assault rifles, I would definitely say you want to pick quick game because they don't okay. have to go to hip fire. So, you want to make sure that you're ADSing, you know, when you're getting into engagements and quicker ADS time helps you be on target because you want to hit accurate shots, uh, et cetera, et cetera. People, um, uh, people in modern warfare are learning that the hard way, huh? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, no kidding. Re resulting to uh, um, iron sights just to get some sort of quick aim going. Oh yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. It's not a pretty scene there. Everything hurts your ADS time for some reason. <laughs> and then, uh, and then for the Sturmgewehr one five, I, I just want to like, make a good comparison here. Right. So, um, so for the G15, one of the features here. Both of them are really good on left and right side. And honestly, okay. even swings and stipples is pretty good too. But I would say for a semi-automatic rifle, you want to go with quick game. Um, so that would really just depend on play style, right? If you if you have enhanced grips and polished action, that lets you mm -hmm. hit fire to like twenty-ish meters on, on a semi-auto rifle, which is pretty good. <laughs> like you can hit fire accurately to twenty meters. That's, That's pretty sweet. good. Um, and like recoil and for the and that that applies to the Sturm Gewehr as well. Both of them have really good hit fire, and that when you get the get those specs on. Um, and the G15 gets lightened stock and custom stock, which helps you strafe ADS really accurately and move faster. So that's really good for SAR because you want to be accurate while you're moving. So either of those are really <laughs> quite good. You that's know, amazing. They're, they're, they're insane. And all the numbers are here. Uh, right. Yeah. Everything. So Prone, crouch, yeah. standing. And there's a little checkbox at the top of the screen. So if you click on that little checkbox where it says compare only the ones that are different, it'll show you the ones that are just different values and that's kind of that'll distill it to like what you're maybe looking for more that'll show oh, you gotcha. like damage max and damage min you can say oh, okay this does you know 30 damage close range this does 25 or whatever you mm -hmm. know yeah this is a uh, really good information for anybody trying to compare certain guns or if they are not sure what's gonna work for them uh you can clearly see here uh which gun to to go for but one of the main questions i want to ask you is sure um, for weapon balance, now that we're on this, is there any gun that's just out of this world way too good for its own sake? Um, do you recall would, anything? Mm, not, no on one stats. gun in particular, I would say, stands out, but the, the semi automatic rifles, so all those ones in the assault class, I would say are the best guns in the game right now. The semi autos, um, yes, yeah. So that's your, your assault class, your 1 5, your G43. Your AGM forty two, uh, your Carabin, your mm -hmm. Magarand, all those assault rifle semi autos. KHT says no. His he says no. Too. Oh, there are, maybe there he are means none. no as in like broken. There are none uh, like broken guns. Yeah. No, no, no broken gun. Nothing that stands out is entirely broken. But the semi automatic rifles for what they do and their versatility and their ease of use is is probably the best in the game um, overall as a whole. Okay, now do you think um, from you know, your conclusions on just guns for now. Um, right. Comparing it to BF4, how they did their whole stats thing, you know, with attachments, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how they were, you know, um, balancing it through that. In comparison with BF5 with a stat tree, mm -hmm. do you think that is the right direction? Or do you think it's now an easier direction for Battlefield? Uh, what are you getting at? It's, it's kind of a <laughs> it's really hard to say because so bf4 had a really cool system that you know it lets you put on you know the, a, a set amount of attachments for every single gun like it was basically mm -hmm. the same attachments for every gun aside from some of the dlc guns that wouldn't let you pick certain attachments because they were just hard locked um 
it was one of those systems where like you could make a gun any way you wanted to kind of fit your play style but a lot of the attachments just weren't worth it and in the end you could end up putting a lot of attachments on that didn't really benefit your gun or maybe just hurt your overall performance with it and we're just a net negative um so b of one did a system where it was like variant system and it just had guns that were specialized in doing certain things and that was why you you would have three different automaticos but they each had a different kind of upside that would let you you know have less recoil Mm -hmm. or have better hip fire so that kind of prevented people from doing dumb things with the attachment system where you know now they can just pick a gun that fits their play style and it would be immediately out of the gate good to go and And that makes yeah that makes sense yeah, it makes sense, but people didn't like that because they're like, oh, my customization, now I can't put on my stubby grip and my laser sight and make it look like my M4 that I have at home or whatever. So, you know, they had to okay. oblige that a bit, and so that's what they did with specs. Is so now you've got your customization separated from your performance, so you yeah. can put on that muzzle brake and it has no impact on your gun, but now your gun can be, you know, better for hip fire or better for ADS, and you kind of have to pick one or the other. And you like this? This is good direction. Uh, it's it's a bit limiting, but I think it's it's a okay. it's a good compromise between the two, right? Because now you you can't have morons hurting their own guns, you know, by putting on <laughs> attachments that have no benefit. But you also kind of give this illusion of player customization. Um, and it's a good way. So like, more. Well, I mean, I say it's a good way. They haven't really done it yet. Hmm. But it's one of those things where, like, if you look at the Sten and the MP40, um, okay. both of them have like the same specs, the same rate of fire, but they have different recoil. So that's the one thing that's kind of right now. But, I, you know, if you if they really, I think if they, they did this the right way, they could give them each, you know, different specs, just slightly, one or two different specs. And you'd have, you know, guns that have the same rate of fire and almost the same velocity, but they would have different specs to kind of differentiate themselves. So I think that's something, it's, it's a cool system that I think they're just now getting into and kind of finding their stride in. You know, you see like the M1 Garand. Um, and that thing has cool specs that lets you either put a grenade launcher or better damage at range. Um, that's something that I think they're they're finally finding their stride with the the, the weapon spec. And hopefully we'll see them yeah. kind of have each gun have its own little niche while still maybe being similar to another gun. You know, so it, maybe it shares the rate of fire with another SAR, but now it has this ability that other guns don't. Like the Trombonsino or the Commando Carbine have their own little niche of a suppressor right. or you know the grenade launcher which is cool because now the yeah. medic has some way to do other things while still having guns that two shot at close range one shot headshot within 75 meters or whatever the number you know that's that's really kind of cool where it, the, the, the guns are similar but they're also different so it lets you create these different guns but not entirely the same well, that was one of the biggest criticism in past uh battlefield games is that a lot of these weapons i mean sure you have a lot of them but they're all kind of just molding together there's not a whole right. lot you get a lot of so- guns that were just in the middle and they just it eventually became a game like bf4 became a game of min max mm-hmm. you'd find the gun that yes gave, <laughs> like you know you'd go aek but you wouldn't go for mob you'd go uh ace 23 but you wouldn't go m416 and they look really close together but it's just the East 23 was a little bit better. But in between were all these guns that didn't really shine because they didn't have the ability to because they were just, they were middle grounds, you know, they didn't mm-hmm. have the rate of fire or they didn't have the recoil control. So they were just, irrelevant. now you have guns that don't have as many options as a whole because not every gun gets the same options, but that lets each gun shine in its own different way. So it's, it's it, it like with everything, there's good and there's bad, but I think this is a, interesting way to take it i and i hope they kind of refine it over time you know as they did with the vehicles vehicles now have six spec trees and i hope maybe the (laughs) european vehicles will see the same thing right where they get an overall spec tree and it's not just a copy paste of other stuff but the vehicle balance is a whole another ordeal that you know it's getting a little crazy debacle it's getting a little crazy now especially with the new planes and the new tanks have an insane spec tree now like uh which way do i go here just try everything well is that is that information now on the simthic website no so that's something that i've i've held off on doing we have some okay. of the basic information available to us um but it's a lot of that information comes without context you so did like make a I, post on just you know right that's, vehicles that's, that's, and discussion yeah. is this uh that's, pretty that's more of an opinion piece um, yeah, right, it is right, up right. to date because I haven't played too much with the Pacific Theater yet. I've maxed okay, out all the gotcha. videos, but I haven't had time to kind of formulate an opinion. Um, but this is definitely more of an opinion piece by myself. This is not reflecting anything on the data. Mm-hmm. Um, this is just, you know, how 
I think is the most viable way to play the tanks and how or the, the aircrafts and you know what specs you should be taking, why them over certain other specs, um, right. all that jazz. Um, yeah, people love this like, type of information uh, yeah, it's because it's hard. It's hard to interpret this. this. Yeah, and I then mean, and then yeah. people don't if you don't sink, you know. 60 hours into a tank you don't immediately know what specs you should be choosing until you get to level four and then you can reset it so people i mean i've, I've talked with so many people that say you know i chose this first spec for my vehicle and now it sucks because i can't level it up any farther so <laughs> you know there, there's a lot of weapons and vehicles in this game that have and that maybe not so much the weapons but definitely the vehicles just have dummy perks that just do not uh they don't benefit the vehicle in, in a major way which kind of mm. seems unhelpful for new players you know if they they choose a new spec it's like oh this looks cool but then they can't actually be effective in that vehicle what's the point of letting them have that spec you know that is yeah vehicles it's, are a whole other it's yeah mess. it seems like it's a well khd says it's extremely difficult to handle and yeah see, yeah so that's what why. i was getting into um we can do projectile values and i can tell you like the okay. velocity of a of a or you know um how much how how big the blast radius is on like a 1000 pound bomb that's easy to do but telling you how it interacts with everything in the game world is very very difficult um because right. it's not something that just happens dice has ways of having things interact with other things through uh what they call as the material grid so mm -hmm. you know if this tank shell hits this tank it'll do this amount of damage based on its interaction with this you know grid mesh so if you know if you hit a t if you hit a plane with a staghound 37 millimeter um it'll kill it immediately just boom exploded but if you hit it with an ap round uh -huh. it will not kill it it'll do like 20 damage and that's wow. because it's getting different material meshes and there's different projectiles you know like the he rounds have blast so that applies differently to an ap round that has no blast so all these things add up and you know maybe this ap round will do more damage first to the tank but not against an uh, a regular you know uh, with an HE shell against that tank, it will do minimal damage. It's just so you uh, yeah. you've recommended some go to vehicles here, like the yes. BF. This is yes. what people like. Like, sure, stats are great and everything, numbers are great, but right. a lot of people just want to know what's the meta, dude. Like, just right. tell yeah. me straight help, up. Help me uh, make a meta pick so yeah. I don't have to. Yeah, exactly. So this is great. I mean, this is all yes. in the yeah. forums. And uh, that is we, something we that more we want to do as well because it, it's something that I've you just said it, it's something that you know people come and maybe they don't want to look at all these numbers and it can be overwhelming to say hey here's all right. these spread values for all these weapons and all these vehicles here's how you need to interpret them but it, it can be yeah. overwhelming so having a section and i both myself and some of the other devs have been talking about this will we'll, we'll have a kind of like a maybe like a blog page or a, i don't know really call it blogs but just like a, a just a page for like insights so you could it would just be a post about saying how to pick the best weapon for you you know or here's the best weapon given a, a purely numerical take you know i don't want to interject my opinion unless i'm saying here's ex explicitly my opinion so like on the third section of my vehicle page i say here's my opinion here's what you should be using you know but all that said you know we don't want to put that into people's mouths but we'll, but we'll say here's you know given a you know mathematically stable variation of you know whatever we're saying this is what you might want to use you know this is the easiest recoil this is the best hit rate at this range you know uh -huh. um, these are the most meta picks given, you know, everything else in the competition. You, like, you want to not be this using ARs when you have semi-automatic rifles to use. You want to not be using SMGs past a certain range where you just won't be doing enough damage to be relevant. That kind of stuff. So you can tell people what's the best. And that we, that's something we, we do want to do, but we wanted to get all the basic informa information out there first. So we kind of have yep. the, the framework that Synthic originally had. So we get some writers, we'll get some mm -hmm. people that are interested in doing it, then we'll go from there. That's awesome. That's good to hear. That, that's really cool that you guys are uh, making an initiative to make things just a little easier for, you know, the regular old normie to come in here and it's like, ooh, cool numbers. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a question here from um, Nifty in here, it, spread mechanics. I think you can find most of that spread information here um, right. in, uh, in this area. It's like right below yes. the crosshair. Yeah, so you, that'll tell you the spread for every weapon. And then you also have spread for... Um, like there's, there's a general write-up on how spread works in the general the weapon mechanics page and that'll tell you just that mm -hmm. it's a little bit more than layman but it's still fairly easy to comprehend how it works so like you have all these spread values and that'll tell you exactly where your gun's gonna go within a cone that fires out of your like okay. front of your gun 
So, so this is only while standing. So how would you see the ADS spread while crouching? Is there something? So there, the number, so ADS right there. If you move up to the right a little bit, you'll have that standing guy. That green mm -hmm. value is your standing, and the point fifteen beneath it, and the point fifteen beneath it is uh, crouching. Then the, this is the middle one's crouching, the bottom one's yes. prone. Yes. Okay. 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 That was a little confusing for me there because there's no like. A lot like of numbers, yeah. Labels, I guess. There's no labels on here. Yeah, I mean, maybe yeah. there's um, like a, something if, if on the top. The, if you check the equipment page, there'll be a little breakdown with that. Um, but that is something that we'd equipment like to have. Equipment page. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, if you change these values here on the uh, spec tree, uh, it will change. Like, you just hit right. custom stock and then bam. Uh, yep. There's no spread at all. So. <laughs> Especially while oh, ADSing, of course. And then this is the, the guy with the gun is when he's like moving around, I suppose. Yeah, so you, okay. you have different values when you're moving and when you're stationary. And typically, I think on every gun, uh, it, your, your spread is worse when you're moving. So if you want to be the most accurate, you want to be standing still. Right. And it really depends on your game, on your play style. Uh, if you're a runner and gunner, uh, mm -hmm. you're probably going to want a specific... Uh, stat in the spec tree that uh, makes your accuracy better while yes, moving. Yeah. And, and, and this should yeah. come down to like, you know, not only your play style, but also just the gun you're using. So if you're using, yeah. you know, a gun that has naturally low movement spread, you should be moving with it a lot. You should take advantage of that. People can't hit moving targets as easily as they can someone who's standing still being a dummy. So if you have a gun that has a, you know, spec that reduces your spread mm -hmm. while moving, Abuse it, use it, you know, move straight <laughs> back and forth while you're shooting. Make yourself harder to hit and you'll still be relatively accurate. You know, depending on the gun, you can still laser beam people or hit them accurately or whatever it is that gun is and, you know, abuse that ability because it's not something that's yeah. default for every gun or every gun type, gun type. You know, it's if you have that spec, you should use it. I feel like a lot of people don't care. <laughs> they just like, oh, I unlocked something in the spec tree. Let's click yeah. on it. And, it, uh, and, and and there are like vague descriptions that tell you, <laughs> you know, what it does. And some of them try to be insightful. So like the high velocity bullets will say, oh, it increases your velocity by 10%. You know, that, bullets. Sound, that sounds great. <laughs> well, okay. Well, look at the, um, let me see real quick. So the jungle carbine right there. If you click on high velocity mm -hmm. bullets, you'll see the velocity number go from 500 to what? 570. Yep. 570. Um, great. So that's like 10%. But if you go down to the uh, MAB 38 and you click on high velocity there, you'll jump from 345 to 600. That is not 10%. That is much higher than 10%. Or 560, oh yeah. God. That's not 10%. So the game tells you 10%. It is not 10%. MAB is very good oh. at range because you have very fast bullets, no spread. No, no spread. You have low spread and uh -huh. you have low recoil. So you can laser beam people with MAB. You know, it'll take you a couple of bullets more than an assault rifle, but it'll still kill people. You know, it's still accurate. You would say that, for that the spec tree description yeah. is wrong. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And you found this in the data in the data uh, mm -hmm. pretty much in the mm -hmm. code. Wow. Interesting. No. And the game wouldn't uh, tell you otherwise. It would just tell you, oh, 10 percent. Have fun. It's not. <laughs> That's wild. So you would say this is the meta for the MAB. Go for the high velocity bullets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and quick reload, as far as I know, is a flat ten percent. That says increase or fifteen or whatever. I forget the number exactly. Um, and that that is just the value of that speeds up the animation. Ah, um, so that that exactly. that is like typically a fifteen percent. Is but that an oversight or is that something no, I, intended? Oh, I mean, yes, it's an oversight, but I don't okay. know. I assume the value that they gave it five sixty is intentional. So they mm. they wanted to have a fast velocity. Maybe they didn't, and they just gave it a random number on accident. I don't know. Um, but either way, I would take it and use <laughs> it with high velocity because it's amazing. You know, that makes it go from an SMG rate of, or velocity to like an AR velocity, which is much more useful. I mean, you can, you can sufficiently snipe people with that, provided they're an easy target for five bullets or ten bullets or whatever range you're engaging at. Yeah. Uh, if anyone new here, welcome. Uh, I'm talking here with um, Incarnate, uh, one of the Simthic leaders. They just released their new website, sim.gg, that has all this information. You probably recognize th these types of charts and information from uh, a lot of content creators that use this information to break down new weapons that are coming out. So we're just kind of going over the features here for Battlefield 5. This is brand mm -hmm. new. You have and your spec trees here, everything. Uh, 
we had another appearance in here in Nocturne Saga. He's uh, done a lot of weapons work for us since like BF Oui. three four so he's also an og guy who's done a lot of data analysis and uh weapon statistics stuff so he's also a very good resource if you ever see him in the discord or right now you can ask him questions as well he's he's a very smart guy he knows way yeah. more than me ask, uh, and I know ask away out. guys if you have yeah. any uh you know issues like uh, uh, nifty was asking about spread we went over that so anything yep. and uh, you want to ask not in any there. way cover that sufficiently but the website has <laughs> everything covered so spread you know there's tons of stuff that goes on the spread for battlefield games and it's gotten even worse with or better i'm not sure which way you want to say it for bf5 but the website will tell you everything under the weapon mechanics i'll tell you exactly how spread works cool and you can also sort by different types of weapons here everything mm -hmm. you need is here um the next thing is weapon comparisons mm -hmm. um it's pretty much a drop down menu and it goes we we kind of show this for like the uh, comparison between it was the Sten and the MP40, which were the basic right. weapons yeah. for uh, each uh, for the Germans and the U.S. Uh, yep. when the game came out. So mm -hmm. uh, let's see, MP40, uh, they're all in alphabetical order. So mm -hmm. these have the same exact spec tree. So if you just went all yes, right, yeah. you can see the comparison. There's just slight mm -hmm. deviation with the MP40. Has a little more uh, time Bowl to velocity. kill upper bound. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the MP40 will reach its target target at 100 meters slightly faster than the uh, Sten. Yeah. Or wait, no, is it all... Sten? I can't. I can't see on your screen too well. That might be the Sten. Whichever one has higher velocity, I forget what. They're uh, they're exactly the, the same. They're the same line, pretty much. A blue and green. Right. Uh, the blue well, one. Well, the damage is, is the, the same. Sten, the bolts, yeah. the kill is the same, but the the TTK incorporates velocity. Um. So. It, at 100 meters, the, one of the guns will reach it slightly faster. <laughs> Incarnate is bad. What's up, Proto? Oh, Proto. What a, <laughs> oh, <no. what> a... <laughs> so, I mean, there's not much. I mean, when you click on the little um, check, mark, check mark box here, only include rows with different values. There's not right. many. There's not many yeah. at all. So your initial speed Z, I think, right there. That is your, or your initial speed. Uh, both of those, I think, are the same value. So we have it listed twice uh, for whatever reason. Can, uh, um, can zoom in. That is that is your bullet velocity. So the Sten has a slightly faster bullet velocity. So that's what gives it that TTK edge at 100 meters slightly is because the bullet hit, reaches the target slightly faster. Oh, my but God. Look at that. At 100 meters, you probably shouldn't be using your SMG in the first place. You should not be shooting that because it's doing yeah. your your what's your your min damage. There is like 11.2. It's terrible. So don't <laughs> well, there you save go. your time, save your breath, engage with another gun or just don't engage at all. Well, I mean, yeah. So everything you need to know about engagement distances, uh, you know, what's the strong point of certain guns? It's all here in the weapon comparison area. So next thing, you guys also have equipment data. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very clean. I don't know who, who whom it was. Uh, Urbenter made this as well. No, so this is who all this? PNG graphics that I made. I made you all these made PNG these? graphics because wow. we, <laughs> we don't have the template yet, and I want Urbenter to work on this eventually. Um, but you know, free time permitting and just you know, general to, to make it look right, we want to do make sure we do it right. So this is equipment, and I based this off of someone else. Uh, what was his name? I think his name was Source, and he okay. did stuff back in BF three with this kind of same layout. So I copied his layout, tweaked it a bit, and put up images for all these equipment things. And I haven't done a couple of them because the incendiary nade just changed, and I need a good way to uh, display damage over time, which is kind of weird to do. Uh, the AP mine has like a damage radius, so I haven't done that one yet because it it does damage at an angle. They keep fiddling with that little bastard, yeah. don't they? I, yeah, good. I nerf oh, him hey. to the ground. I hate it. There's, uh, your the Faust. The... there's your Flieger yeah, Faust. There's your Flieger Faust. There's your Flieger Faust. It has the spread of a LMG. The Sten or the Bren, um, it fires instead of firing like it did in real life with four rounds and five rounds. It mm -hmm. fires three projectiles three times for a total of nine. It, it's weird. It's I don't think it's finished. I wrote a whole Reddit post on it. You can read that. It's silly. I don't I don't think they finished. I think they just placeholdered it. Somebody uh -huh. marked it as done and they put it in the game. So I mean, do you think they're gonna nerf it or they're gonna have to do <sighs> something, right? I think they'll do something. I don't know if they'll nerf it. Um. It's okay. it's something that I know a lot of people are salty about, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if you nerf it too much, then it's not going to be good at all. If you nerf it, you know, just a little bit, it won't change anything. It, yeah, it's <laughs> it's a it's a very goofy. I don't, the, 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 yeah, it's it's goofy, 
and interaction between infantry and air has always been bad in Battlefield title. It's just never now, been a, a good dynamic. Okay, at the top you said this is for damage against infantry only. Now, right. that's the so same for the Fleeger's House as well? Yes, yes, that okay. does. Though KHD said you, uh, dud values right now, so maybe right. we, we might have we goofed on that, so I, I'll look into that. Um, maybe he found some other data. But uh, that was okay, so you had. guys are gonna plan to release information on damage for well, against vehicles, well, though, right? No. So this is the same kind of vein as vehicle versus vehicle damage. There's a, uh, a multiplier, or there's a material grid that goes between your projectile and what its impact. So the damage for a Fliegerfaust is listed like four different times, oh. but even then, we don't know how those four different damage models will interact with different targets. So it might interact differently between a JU-88 and right. a Stuka and a BF-109, or between a sandbag and an infantry, or between then, a tank and, you know, a mountain machine. Just then you got, then you got glancing different. blows as well to, oh, to think God, about yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think glancing blows should be in the in, in Battlefield? Ooh. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's... it's <laughs> I, I, I like it as a way of punishing people who are careless with their shots. I think it's a interesting mechanic um, and it rewards players that are accurate and that get good angles and take proper shots. Um, but it also really hurts consistency between an armor engagement. Um, you know, if you get one glancing blow and you weren't intending to get it, like you know what you're doing and you're watching for your angles and you get a random glancing blow because something very slightly changed between when you shot fired the shot and maybe the, the target vehicle moved or, uh, you know, maybe, I, I don't know what happened. Maybe he got hit by another explosion and it tilted him slightly and now you're, you're ricocheting. Um, that really stinks. And it, yeah. it really hurts overall engagement because if you start getting glancing blows for no apparent reason to that you can tell, you'll take a, an engagement that might take four tank shells and bump it up to an eight tank shell engagement. So that engagement went from a 15 we've second seen, engagement. We've to seen a some videos of people blasting each other yeah. for like three or four blow, minutes. They're all it's, glancing it's not blows. Like, it's just not fun. Yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So Stop. It's, I think if, if you nerf it to be uh, like less common, then when it happens, then that. it'll be even, it'll be well no no because then it'll be even more annoying because then you'll get it oh, seemingly really? out of nowhere and people will be like oh my god i just got a glancing blow you know why did it happen i never get these and people get more at more grumpy so i think it's one of those things where you either make it huh. less impactful so like you'll still do damage but you won't do the two damage that you do now or you just so maybe instead of doing two damage on a glancing blow you'll do you know, seventy five percent of the damage that you should be doing at a correct angle or something. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to theorize right now because this is not. Uh, yeah, we're not fully done yet. No, I'm I'm not fully prepared to, to go into a vehicle discussion right now about glancing blows and weapon mechanics. And I'm not a dev developer. So I know right. exactly why they do the the things they do. I'm sure there's a reason for everything that they do. Um, but they don't really disclose that too often. And for, to me, on the outside, it, it seems like glancing blows are a mistake. But I don't have a great reason to say that other than that it feels yeah. bad when you're on the receiving end of a glancing blow of course when, when you get hit by a glancing blow bad. and you're like wow i just survived that i shouldn't have survived that because yeah. most of the time i feel like you get glancing blows when tanks are retreating or when they're standing still and they're not paying attention and something just happens and you're just like you you you, you get a glancing blow that ricochets off your hull and you're just like wow yeah. that was really lucky i didn't mean for that to happen you know i, I wasn't intending for the to hit me at this angle and get a ricochet it just <laughs> happened Proto um, is talking about your PTC treatment videos. What is that? Uh, you can Google that if you want to. I uh, we we had this thing going back. So it was Simthic and PTC were some of the American teams I used to play uh, back in BF4, and we would have this thing where just like we would we would play against PTC and shenanigans would always happen. And so like they oh, bullied me this. hard with C4 quads on like a Zavod round. That's the top. Uh, Royal, one of our tankers, had an engagement where um, he had like a total of 40 projectiles hit him in a tank while he, we had four people repairing him. Just mm. banana stuff that would just happen. It was just... <laughs> a glorious <laughs> BF4. Yeah, shenanigan. So let's talk about a little bit about vehicles. It seems like you're pretty passionate about vehicles here, though. Yeah, I've always kind of been a vehicle player by heart, but... Infantry's You're fine. a really good infantry player, though, by the way, even in BF5. I mean, did you play cool. a lot of infantry in BF4? 
Uh, not if I didn't have to. Um, there okay, were people okay. that we had. Like, I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm most bad because I don't think I was top tier, but I think I was above average. But we had people that were top tier. Like, we had people by the name of Grand Beast. Uh, we we had I people remember that, like man. um, uh, Walks and Hide, uh, mm. Secret, Aider, Jack. All these people were five v five infantry, and they had a passion for just playing infantry, even in tens. So you know, when they would go into five v five games and they would just frag out, we'd also put them in the ten v ten games, and we'd say, "Hey, play this like a fives game. We'll put you on a point on a flag." have fun just go at it so like zavada is a perfect map where there's an insular inside mm-hmm. flag for you know our infantry to just be by themselves fight other infantry and go ham so we would have them just do that and i would send a vehicle and just do whatever i needed to do and they would are, just go are, off are you yeah. sad that you can't get in and out of your tanks super quick anymore do you want that back uh, or <laughs> are you content with your uh, animations I'm not content with it because I, I, I really loathe animations as a whole. I think they, <laughs> they it, it's something that just kind of slows down the, the pacing, you know? If you're stuck mm-hmm. in an animation for five seconds, you feel helpless. You feel like you can't do anything, and that's not fun. And the FPS, that's especially like an arcade shooter like Battlefield or Call of Duty or whatever it is. <clears throat> QTEs and, and any animation lock is just not fun. Um, so get rid of it, right? Well, get rid of it. But also no, because I I understand why is a thing. You know, if you immersion, if, if some, no, not even immersion so much. It, it it prevents people from the shenanigans that would happen in BF three and BF four. Uh-huh. Where you have people popping in and out of vehicles instantaneously. Like yes. that's something we would abuse all the time in competitive. You know, we'd have people spawn on a vehicle, and we would just we would just clown car. You know, people would, like five people <laughs> would pop out of one ATV because they spawned we, on one dude who was. Right we couldn't. There. Like normal pub players like myself, we couldn't stop you guys. Like I remember getting killed by you guys hundreds yeah, of times. And it's, it's it was very hard uh, it was, to get to get rid of you. Yeah, but now, but like compared now to now in BF five, uh, there's an animation lock, so you can shoot us as we're totally helpless climbing out of a vehicle. You know, it's right. Yeah, I, I understand why they did it, even if they didn't intentionally do it for that reason. You know, maybe it was totally merged. Fine, whatever. What but, would they do? What can they do right now? Now that they're, you know, really putting in some time into BFI, they got about a year and a half, two years of development time. Right. Do you, th- what direction do they need to take with vehicles right now? <sighs> what, what do they need to start? There's, like, I mean, uh, there's a it, lot of ways you could go. I think fa- but do, do they need to be I, faster. Let's just start with, the, do the tanks need to be faster uh, overall? Uh, or maybe specific uh, tanks. I don't know. It like, really just depends on like what what kind of play style you want your your vehicles to be doing, and, and what even you want your vehicles to be doing in your game. Like, do you want them to be high priority, valuable assets, or do you want them to be expend auxiliary kind of like set pieces? You know, what do you, do you, what do you tanks? think? <laughs> I don't know because you, you know, know, if, know if you have tanks like BF four tanks or even BF three tanks, which are far just, far worse in of terms them. of just <laughs> destroying, you know everything on the map you know provided a competent tanker is behind the seat mm-hmm. like you 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 can just tear up entire servers round after round unless someone who matches you or is better than you comes into the server and start really giving you a hard time and keeps you in check and bf5 and bf1 vehicles are really hard to do that with because they don't move as fast they don't have as many or maybe they have as many options but they don't have as many ways to use those options um because they can't engage and disengage that easily anymore and there's not as many like there's not as many vehicles to mess around with i mean they're pretty uh, limited compared it, to like uh, yeah, older games it, do you think maybe they should add more i mean, I mean just look no, at the new I, pacific I, maps uh do you think they should I, add more I, boats more transports I, no no i, no. I think no. it just comes down to making sure the the ones that they implement they implement correctly and make sure they have a they, they have a clear goal set in mind for when they do right if you if you implement okay. something and everyone kind of can't decide on how to use it and no one can find a way to do it correct then you've done that poorly or if people do find a way to use it but it's not effective and doesn't play well into the game then you've done it ineffectively and there's a lot of vehicles in the like european theater right now that are just totally and completely irrelevant like if you peak if, if you pick this vehicle you're hurting your team or you're going to do nothing and then hurt your team or you're going to kill yeah. yourself and hurt your team you know, it, there, there's so many things that like you could pick another vehicle out of the vast array that you're given and do a more beneficial job at helping your team or at least not waste the asset entirely. Um, it's the, 
I would say the biggest thing they need to do is just get rid of the you can saw on whatever vehicle you want on it. I think that's dumb. I think it's stupid. Get rid of it because they create so many unknowns that when you try to get into a map, you know, it, like if if I'm playing for, I don't know how do I how do I if I, if I'm trying to play to win. Okay. How do I define winning? Is that defining winning by based on my KD, or is that based on winning based on you know the map itself and helping my? So I'm playing for KD. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna spawn a fighter plane, and I'm gonna shoot down all the aircraft that try to fight me, and I'm gonna spec my fighter plane to be as best as it can be in the air versus other aircraft. So that means like no bombs. That means no you know ground support. That means like taking maneuverability and like multiple guns. So then I shred everything in the air, but maybe my team is getting rolled by an enemy tank on the ground and there's nothing I can do about it because I didn't spec in the ball, right? So then I've preserved my KD, but I've hurt the team. Um, or I could take a bomber, you know, maybe I can really help on the ground and I can, you know, start dragging out these infantry with like a bombing strafe. That's cool. But then I might be wasting that asset because they spawned in a fighter. So he's going to shoot me down after one strafe and I've oh just wasted God. an asset. And now that fighter is going to start harassing, you know, my yep. other plane or, you know, it's just, it's a total, just, it's. They need to re rework the whole plane system. Uh, yeah, just dog fighting in general is so bland. Yeah. Do, yeah oh it's, my oh God. man. It's, if you it's thought like they're on your butt, like, they're, if they're on your butt, you're dead pretty much. Yeah. Like you can't yeah. get away. Do you think they should add? I, I was discussing this with the, um, the other person I was on with the, on the BF show. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I've been talking with Enders on the first Battlefield show we had here, mm -hmm. and um, it's just it's just lifeless. Uh, there's no, um, you know, the speed turn. Uh, you right. know what was that called the, again? Every, uh, every, like the the there was a perfect turn ratio. So in like in BF three and BF four, it was three thirteen or I think three seventeen if you reverse ruddered. But how like, did they get rid of that? because it was inaccessible to newer pilots like there's nothing that says this is your turn rate for a perfect perfect turn radius no there wasn't you, you had to figure that out of, of course and that's what made it so painful for new did pilots the sim thick the web, did the sim thick out. website show that uh the older no. older ones no, they never that did was bf1 no that was well bf1 didn't even have that mechanic that was gone by bf um wait they had that was the, they had the turning, uh, or like a certain speed. You get a ultimate turning radius, right? I a speed. So for BF one, no. I think BF one has BF1? about the same I... mechanics as BF five, where it's just stall the win, or don't and die. Oh my I, god, yeah. really? Oh, jeez, that's. Terrible. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't waste a lot of time on BF one. Um, yeah, as too. far as I know, the dog fighting scene was not very happy with BF one nor BF five. Um. Yeah, and toxic. most most of, most of this yeah most of this knowledge was uh was mostly insular because of these you know dog fighting groups so like you'd have a lot of guys that would figure this out because they wanted to fly planes in bf4 or bf3 and so they'd mm. figure it out and they say oh this is the turn ratio and that's how i figured out about it because i had friends that were pilots and they would tell me okay you want to turn this and you want to bind like pitch up the space bars you can keep turning as tight as you can and do all these inside tricks so there, there's nothing that leads the new player to learn how to play and then, of course, you get new planes like in BF5 where you have no specs to help you, like, help the team, right? Like, you, like a, a default zero right now in the Pacific Theater starts yeah, off yeah. with, like, two nose guns uh -huh. and two bombs that are pathetic. <laughs> and that's it. Like, and they expect you to, to grind to level three to get bombs or more missiles or whatever it is. And they expect you to somehow find the points while not wasting your time and they assume that you're helping your team while doing this. Well, in reality, you can't. Like, the, the, the average pilot can't barely even shoot down another plane. Imagine if that plane knows they're there. They're going to be circling for hours, or one of them will just give up, and they'll just go their separate ways. Piloting, piloting is not intuitively easy, and DICE does not make it easy to get into in the first place on top of that. It's just nothing about it is easy or straightforward or designed with the end user in mind because everything needs to be progression based and everything needs to have unlocks and they've done a better job with that in the pacific giving everything kind of these default like missiles or default bombs but they still they still lack usability like if you use the default missiles or rockets on the um corsair they do like 20 damage to like any infantry max <laughs> and so you have to get to level four to grind that out to get upgraded rockets so to you get can those rockets do something useful yeah <laughs> those things like triple kill every time you do a little strafe yeah. run there too so and it's just 
yeah it's it's a, it's a little I, I appreciate i appreciate the thought but then why did you do it if they're gonna be so incredibly useful i don't know it's just filler at that point it's silly so it, it's <laughs> maybe they maybe they know. ran out of time again i don't know no it, i mean this this seems intentional but i see Interesting. intentional with no purpose it's just filler equipment until you up, when until i you when i hear filler when I hear filler, I, I, I hear laziness and, uh, or, um, you just didn't have time to actually implement your vision, you know, just like battlefield yeah. five as a whole, really. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it looks like I, they I, had I, a completely different vision at the beginning uh, of this game. I don't want to be that harsh. Cause I'm sure there are, there is a lot of people out there that, you know, work on the game and they they did see part of their vision make it to the game but i mean you people look at the first trailer and you look at the state of the game when it came out and then you look at the pacific theater and you're thinking about all these three different things because like pacific theater yes. is gritty and there's none of this sjw or you know social progressiveness it's just a bunch of dudes going on the beach getting shot by japanese defenders and that's the end of the trailer you know and, and there's some epic moments and that's it and then you've got the initial trailer that came out and you've got like all this customization and you've got all these people going left, right and center with different, you know, representations of people in the world. And regardless of your, your stance, there was a di different tone set from that trailer and the Pacific trailer, very different game. And they've somehow managed the transition between the two and not totally implode. But along the way, they've, they've definitely lost certain things We're that they sorry. probably wanted to achieve, you know? Yeah, where's my it's... teddy bears on tanks, man? I heard there uh, that new announcement uh, not too long ago that they have a set date for yeah, body tank too. body customization. We'll see after a and... year when that finally comes out. I don't. Know. We'll see. Hey, hey, listen. I hope your page doesn't do that. Where's that um, vehicle data page coming soon? <laughs> TM. Uh... Don't be them. Don't be them. Hey, hey I'm taking like... inspiration from the game devs. Okay. I'll take yeah. my sweet time and I'll release it when I'm ready, or maybe not at all. <laughs> Soon, TM. But uh, yeah, uh, what uh, you... we will, on the vehicle data, we will eventually have something out, even if it's basic data. But as far as the material grid data, that's too complex, really, unless we we invest a lot of time. And I know that we we have certain uh -huh. people that are interested in doing that kind of, but it will take a long time to get all the variables correct to know how everything interacts with every. It's just a very strenuous process, unless someone from Dice, which is what happened, right. I think, in BF4, comes down from the heavens and says, "Hey, here's the material grid." have fun figure Yay. it out this will help so let's unless they do that let, we're kind of we're kind of boned for now it's gonna take a while let's backtrack here so we can get it for all the newcomers in here trying to figure out what, what is all this stuff Simthic is a community of volunteers yeah um uh, essentially yes like no one here is paid no one here uh gets any kind of sponsorship or whatnot our, our team Simthic did have a sponsorship from a server hoster at one point um i maybe we technically still do but <laughs> we haven't used any of their servers and they haven't talked with us in a while because we don't do anything anymore because battlefield's right. more or less dead competitive um but right that's where like, that was a big yeah. tool for competitive players but like right um simthic is a community that want like yes. the purpose of simthic is to give users or content creators or anybody who's interested mm -hmm. the the tools and the knowledge that should be available. I mean, that's not real readily available in game. This is stuff right. that uh, right. that and should be even in the if game. It was but... available in the game. Right. We want to say it anyways because sometimes game developers will say one thing, and it mm -hmm. actually is something else. Your case in point is the high velocity ammo in BF5. Right? It says ten percent, actually does fifty percent. Oh. Why does that say something different? That's what Simtex there for to tell you what's not explained, or to make sure that something, if it is explained, is explained correctly. You know, it's I, even we got some we got some dice devs that uh, we're talking about this back last year. Um, we'll love to make it that easily visible for all players. But, you know, the, if. Do you think they should make an official website or sure. I, put me out of business? That'd be great. I'd love that. I okay. mean, it, if, if they dice would come up and say, hey, we're going to do everything first. And uh, if they offered us to help, that'd be great. Fantastic. But. But getting information directly from the people who design the systems and can put their input on it is fantastic because that lets the people who design the system say explicitly what happens. That makes us not have to interpret anything, even though we do a fairly good job, I'd like to say, of, of interpreting everything. There's always a room for a little bit of human error. If people who are making the systems come out explicitly mm -hmm. say what happens and they do it themselves, that's fantastic because that makes sure that everybody's getting exactly 
what they need to know from exactly the people who need to be telling them that we're just right. the third party right now. And that's fine. You know, we're, we're happy to fill that need, but that's something that, you know, it's, especially, you know, going back to like call of duty, modern warfare in 2019, Okay. There's so yeah. much. There's so much room for explanation there, and they give none of it. They just say increases ADS time, decreases ADS time. Okay, well, by how much? How many milliseconds? You know, how many frames? Uh, okay. Does it? Is it worse than this attachment? Does it? You know, is there anything else that it does? Maybe behind the scene? I, there's so much room for for more information to be given to the players. So they can make an okay. informed decision on how they're going to exactly. play. Exactly. Exactly. So let's go back just a little bit more here. Simthic, like. Um, how you guys, how do you guys get these numbers and sure. how do you like, you know, reinterpret them into chart form or like you get all this spread data? Is this the, an easy process or like, how, where do you guys start? Like just to explain to the, so, the chat here. Uh, this is, this has been something that's been done before I came around and I just picked up on the process, uh, okay. as other people, you know, did it as well. And we've just kind of improved over time. Uh, as you know, different titles will come out. So like some tools that we use to extract the data and then we decrypt the data from its compressed form uh, or it's in, it, it, I'm not sure exactly because I'm not a file computer guru, but they, mm -hmm. we have different things that we go through. So we have a, a couple of steps in the process. Then eventually the end process that we get and what we interpret is exactly what's listed on the data browser. So if you go to the top right of the page, you'll see data browser, you can click on that. That is exactly the kind of stuff that we look at and we don't upload all the data because First off, that might be some kind of legal issue if they take offense, like, oh, you uploaded the whole game. Yes, it's not playable in this state because it's text files, but maybe they might take issue with whatever that is. We don't, we don't want to put the whole game up there. But also, we're putting up the most relevant data, so this is all in the gameplay folder. So if you go to like BF5H yeah, update 5.0, that's your latest version of BF5. That is BF5 right now that you're playing on. So that's the data we look at, and we know where to look, so we look for the data that we need oh, to you know, analyze. Shit. So that's like cool if you go that to, this is available yeah, uh, yeah. for and, people and just that, to look into. That is something that uh, the head dev, Miffy, wants to do, is he wants to link everything that we say on the site back to the data browser in some way. So if we said your multiplier for headshots is 2.0, we would have a data browser link to where it says that in the data browser about you know interaction on bullets. That's something he wants to do. So Pretty our sick. end goal here is eventually to tell people, hey, you can look for this stuff. You know, We're not anyone special. We know how to do it because we have experience, but this is not completely rocket science, at least for Battlefield 5 or some other games. Some other games are a little bit more difficult. Uh, we're working on those, you know, and it's harder to get into data. But BO5, the end result is very easy for most people to read if you know what you're looking for. But if you go so, to like the update page and you go to like gameplay and you uh, go to weapons uh, and you click on a weapon there, a weapon class, and then like a weapon, we can tell you, you know, the data based on, you know, just this text file. That's gotcha. the kind of stuff we do. Yeah. Uh, welcome all new people from Ender's Raid the channel here. Ooh. My God, how's nice. how's everything? Welcome guys. We're talking with uh Sim Incarnate, one of the co-leaders of Sim Thick Game Science. You guys probably seen them uh from Battlefield Three, BF Four. A lot of content creators use their data to do weapon breakdowns or uh, weapon comparisons, things like that. All the stats here for, for BF5 are now here and available on a new website, sim.gg. So mm -hmm. if y'all want to go check that out, you totally can, sim.gg, sym.gg, and you have all that information you would ever need. There's some vehicle data coming soon, of course. And then <laughs> you got weapon mechanics, general information, uh, stance, model sizing, movement speeds, all that is there right. and it's all yep. being extracted from the game files mm -hmm. um and then interpreted onto really cool weapon charts and exactly. here you go you got all your uh specialization trees everything there for you okay just for you just for you okay let's get into um how this actually helped with communities all right mm -hmm. and i know that sim has their own like competitive community yeah we did a long time ago you did yeah you did and it was yeah. big it was huge you guys are some of the best players ever when whenever we saw your sim tags i left <laughs> i'm like nope oh, i'm no. out of here whenever we saw oh. proto in there or, or incarnate <laughs> i'm like i'm out of there bye i'm i'm just uh. you know gonna have a peaceful night tonight <laughs> um because i know they're gonna whore the tanks and they start <laughs> base raping us so. right. that was my fault that was my fault <laughs> So uh, no, we we know you guys very well. So for 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 the communities, 
Uh, I think mm -hmm. we need this type of information out there. I'm glad you guys are back and doing that. So for uh, the competitive side of that, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that canceled 5v5? Do you think that is something they needed to put in to bring no. certain communities back? No. Explain, no. explain. So uh, I think they made the same mistake that they did with incursions in BF1. And that's the same mistake they did in BF4 and a little bit on Hardline when they dropped it almost immediately after. Uh, yeah. with 5v5 game modes, it's just not Battlefield. That's the crux of my argument for this kind of stuff. I don't mind 5v5s. I know people have their fun, and I played 5v5s for a while in 3 and 4. I thought they mm -hmm. were fun. But when you think of Battlefield, you don't think of 5v5. You know, you don't think of infantry gameplay. You think of big maps. You think of vehicles. You think of combined arms. You know, you, you think of, of people playing Conquest on a vast map with a tank rolling down the middle and a plane flying over and a helicopter coming in to shoot somebody, right? That's Battlefield in most people's minds. So when you when you take all that stuff out, throw five infantry versus five infantry in a claustrophobic room and call it competitive, you kind of deviate away from what makes your your game recognizable by most people. I think and then when maybe, you, when you... maybe they were scared. Maybe they were scared oh, to yeah. lose their image. Well, maybe. Well, so... When they, when they to keep it, you know. Yeah, well, and and I know, I I know some of the reason is they didn't want to deal with like flying eight or ten people out, you know, to an event per team. I remember you that know, fly, <laughs> five is a very standard number. Fine, yeah. fly, fly five people out. That's cool, but like eight people is not much more. And that was the established thing for BF three and BF four, maybe even BF two. I forget. Um, eight v eights, conquest small. That was very established. It was dominant and competitive for the longest time. That's what everybody played. And to, to not build off those communities that already existed and try to make it something official seems foolish to, to just destroy all that, remove control of ability from the players in terms of servers, and then throw them into a 5v5 forced scenario. It seems very silly. And then on top of that, let's take incursions, or let's take the 5v5 game mode, which we knew some yeah. little, little bit about thanks to data mines. Um, and you take the, the base of the game and you just distort it. And... It, it makes no sense because here, instead of just having the basic default of the game, you know, where people have four classes and you have, you know, each gun per class and this interaction between classes, um, they decided to take incursions and just make everything completely new. So you had different classes, you had different uh, vehicle specs, you had all these different things in BF1 that didn't exist in the base of the game. Everything was redone. It was new maps, it was new weapon classes, new vehicle specs. I mean, everything was different. So imagine a new player coming into Battlefield 1 and saying, hey, I really like this game. I've gotten to level 50. I enjoyed a lot, but I'm kind of a competitive player. Let me go play this in a competitive format. And he goes over to Incursions, and it is nothing like the game that he just played. Where is he supposed to go? That doesn't make any sense. Any, everything has been been sorted and shuffled and m just misconstrued. Meanwhile, you have yeah. games like CS:GO or Call of Duty, where everything is the same between competitive and the base casual lobbies. You know, if you go into a quick play match on CS:GO, it's the exact same experience that it is in competitive. At least now it is. Um, I was just talking. I was just talking with the uh, on the last episode talking with Crooked, uh, uh, also an an ex uh, competitive player. He brought up mm -hmm. that same exact example about the core competitiveness of Battlefield, just the way it is, yep. and you know how just keep it, just keep it how it is and put right. it in a competitive setting. I yeah. mean, that's kind of what it, people it did for BF One and Domination. Yeah, that people, all it, the it, competitive it, players, went to Domination because it was the only competitive thing they had. But now mm -hmm. they brought up incursions, and now it's a whole different formula. And I'm like. Yep. No, and that, I, that's that what's your bringing new players. It, right. it's, un, it's unnecessary work for the developers. Like I, I, there, I know there's there's a reason why they did it. Yeah. But for the life of me, it, it doesn't under it, it, like why someone didn't come in, slap someone, and say, "Hey, you're making this harder <laughs> than it needs to be. You're reinventing the wheel, and you've made it a square. Why are you <laughs> doing this?" It, <laughs> I don't know. Like you just. Yeah, RS, yeah. yeah, and RSP not being there is also not a good idea. Well, RSP for any of this. doesn't need to be there if you have a competent matchmaking system, especially for competitive. You know, if you give people MMRs or oh, SRs yeah, or every game you're system you're going to use, and you throw them together in a match-made lobby, you know, and you give them a sort of maybe roll queue, you know, if you, if you base someone off of armor or air 
and then infantry for just limited roll queue. You can have an effective system for matchmaking, but they yeah, but what about private? That. What about private stuff? Oh, uh, totally, totally. I agree. I, oh. I agree that private games should, by default, be a thing, especially on PC. It's been a thing since the nineteen what eighties, nineties. I mean, <laughs> yes, it's outstanding. <laughs> yeah, it's it, why why, and and as far as I know, the the reason for doing that was to uh, unify the experience across all platforms. I don't want to be a console. I moved from three hundred and sixty to PC <laughs> so I could have a better experience in terms of my gameplay why in the world would you dumb down my server rental system all the controls and plugins that i could have in bf3 bf4 hardline and remove them completely at first to not it have was any a de- apparently no it was a leadership just, decision they're like we just want everything in one one basket ground. we want it all in one basket we want it neat and clean so you know we're gonna scrap it and make it from scratch the whole yeah, rsp I, thing and then again, they never did it <laughs> yeah it's it's <laughs> so what, uh, let's go back to the 5v5 yeah, just yeah. so we don't lose yeah. track here in five in the 5v5 in the game data the code that mm-hmm. um someone like temporal yes. would dig up it kind of seems there is their own uh equipment yes y- unique yep. equi- unique guns unique gun balance yep uh maybe unique maps i don't, I don't know but yes, I there so. were two there were two that we got that are yes, for yeah. squad conquest, yep. but those are made for yep. 5v5, apparently. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And then you have, um, and all that was made specifically for the 5v5 game mode. Now you can't just release those cool new guns and gadgets because right. they're all balanced for that specific game. Right. So they just went back. They probably didn't take anybody's criticisms. I mean, if they listen to you know you incarnate and crooked from last time. There's mm-hmm. two people I would say, no, that's a bad idea. You probably, you know, you should give us at least some uh, choices. You know, you can have this way of playing the 5v5 right. and this way of playing 5v5. Well, okay, so as so, far as I know, that was something that was done very early on in development. They wanted it to be 5v5. They determined yeah. that 5v5 had to be a thing, and they determined that it had to be this way for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, despite I knowing some protests from some dice devs. Uh, that that's the way they were very set on doing it. So, I again, I they don't listen to the community. I don't think, and when they do, it's only when there's you know extreme outrage, like when the TTK point five thing came out, <laughs> and you had people doing extra. It just they finally reversed that. You know, so I it's like I I know dice devs that said, hey, interesting, we played in competitive. You need to not do five v five. You need to focus on eights. You need to focus on vehicles. You know, you need to make this experience unique and battlefield. But there was some tone deafness there, or whatever it was, that just said, "Hey, we can't do that right now. We, we no, we need to do this this way for X Y Z reason." I don't know why, but you can see like temporal leaked it, and then I've seen it in the files. There's equipment in the game that just did not make it out of five v five, and either right now it's still in the files in a very limited fashion, or it's just not mm-hmm. there at all. So they've just pulled it all. And that's unfortunate because that seems like a very like how how are you that short sighted that you would say okay well here's five guns that are going to be in this game mode and no one else unless you play competitive will ever see you've just created you know weapon assets of like an M2 car that blew my that takes mind a lot dude. of work that and blew my that's mind still not I was like... they actually okay that was in the files last patch they removed yeah. it from the files this patch it's not there so why. I mean, I understand not releasing it until it's ready. And I know like the Brita went under some tweaks to make sure that it was ready between 5v5 and 64-man conquest because there's some differences in gameplay, you know, and balancing that needs to be accommodated for. Fine. I understand that. But totally and not releasing weapons. Maybe we'll see the M2 Carbine in Chapter 5 or Chapter 6. I hope that we would. Um, there's other yeah. guns that just made an appearance in neither game, you know, in, in the 5v5 or the base that have just been there in the files since the beta. Or just not been there at all, and you've seen them in trailers, like the uh, the Sojourn initial <laughs> shotgun that was in BF One was in one yep. of the trailers for the release. Yeah, still in the files, still not fixed, still just sitting there. It, 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 it is complete. It is complete, sh- other than like one or two issues that need to be fixed. But the, the asset show is shot, there. The show shots a yeah. meme now. That was in so. the game. It functioned in multiplayer. They ripped it out of multiplayer, multiplayer. after people started using it. It's still in the co-op. It's still in the single player. So, co op. <sighs> co-op. I forgot about co-op. Yeah. Jesus. Yep. Now we'll do you, now okay so do you think Battlefield Five needs a competitive scene in 
I mean, in BF5, or do you want to wait for BF6 or whatever they're going to release in two uh, years? <laughs> I do not think DICE should do anything. I think they should take their hands off the game, give us RSP, and let the community make competitive games. If a game is good, it will find itself a commu- competitive community. Then they well, can we've been doing it for decades, right? I know that's right. That's what we did in BF2, we did in BF3, we did oh in BF4. My God. The community had a system that worked. Why not just take that and support it? Why reinvent the wheel again? Why make it a square? I don't know. Maybe but it doesn't make money. That... Oh, okay, great. It doesn't make you money, or it's not as easy to do. But the community found a way to make it work. So why not support the community? I it may not be you know the, the way the EA execs want it to be, but this is the community. You want to support the community. You want to keep the community happy, so it comes back for the next title. Yeah, they don't give the a shit. DLC. They don't give a shit about any of that. <laughs> they, they, they want. Uh, no. I mean, I, mean well, I, I do. I do not think Dice should do anything other than just do RSP. Make sure the game is functional. Yes. Uh, when the that's what they're working on that, now. You know, if if they can they gave they gave a squad conquest which i did not think was ever going to come again i thought they just got rid of that they axed it never going to see it again they they gave us that back so i think squad uh squad quest with squad. rsp <laughs> yeah. yeah squad quest with rsp could be a potential game mode um but it mm. just depends you know we need to see how it plays out with competent players playing against one another um in a in a closed environment and you know maybe you'll see some kind of rebound That'd be great, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon unless yeah. you know, Dice gives us the ability to let it happen. It's they make just, it, it's, Ender's, you know. Ender's makes a good point. Comp would bring money. I mean, that's the whole point of them trying to get in on the competitive scene. They want to do it right. You know, they want... Sure. I, I remember the back in the day... When right, they, though. <laughs> I, yeah, I remember the community manager uh, at that time was like, you know, battle. this new Battlefield 1 is going to oh, be the, no. the number one best no, not uh, Zinto. competitive... Yeah. Zinto, no. He was like, focus, laser focused on this. And then, and then the game came out. He went to Africa for a whole year, came back and said, what happened? And everyone got even more mad. <laughs> You gotta watch it. You tweet. You gotta watch it. You know, but I okay. I my opinion is I think they should bring the RSP first, and it will naturally go into. I agree with you. It will naturally go just like it did in BF, fucking BF two, BF two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, It'll work out that way. Tournaments for BF four and BF three. Like I, I know that it can work, and the community is excited and wants to do things like that. But if you don't let the community do it, Absolutely. and if if you do let them do it, but you do it in a completely different game mode, <coughs> incursions, then you can't. No one's gonna want to play it because it's it's relearning something that they thought they. Knew. Why make the game any harder for new players to pick up? Then you have to. Doesn't make any sense. Every, everything they've done so far is totally counterintuitive to anything that they've said in terms of competitiveness for the game, and that breaks my heart because I you know I I like playing competitive battlefields because it's fun. It's a challenge, you know, and, it, and I, I don't think I've ever seen a game that has played out exactly the same as any other game. You know, when I was playing all okay. those years and be a four competitive, you know, every single round would be a little bit different to a lot of bit different between the same map, you know, and, and it promotes awesome. better. And it promotes better map design, too. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, once they figure out some some good ones, I mean. I remember some of the BF4 maps, which uh, there's a lot of good BF4 maps. I do remember that, but now. Now, when you don't focus your game on certain aspects like competitive or, I mean, like just city maps in general, you get things like Panzerstorm. Like, <laughs> I, I don't well, know where that kind of thing <laughs> uh, uh, Maybe I, the vehicles, uh, yeah. the, the computer model told them this was a good idea to, for, yeah. you know, to promote vehicle uh, gameplay. But um, I noticed in BF5 that the. I don't really like. A lot of the maps um yeah I, I think you're with the majority of the community there it's just <laughs> which is not sucks, a like, lot of good oh, maps I, and I, I know that's I a lot of that just saying this. like my realism my my you know my this isn't authentic <laughs> it doesn't seem vibe and i that's totally true i think there's a point to that but also just a lot of the maps just don't play well and i think that's in part because there's just poor map design but i think that's also because there's too much of a focus on the art department you know there's too many effects. There's too much stuff on the too ground. Lighting, yeah, the whole lighting yeah, fiasco, just, and uh, they have to that's change not like, player that's not models. Even the maps. That's just you know poor art design. I hope well, they keep you know, working on that. By the way, 
Uh, sure, you can see people a little brighter in dark areas. Yeah. But what about people in bright areas already? Like, well, okay, so here's my, you know, this has been since they need to work one. On that. When they you step inside of a building and mm. you've been in this building for like 30 seconds and you step back outside the win that building, you are blinded by the sun again. Your eyes don't don't adjust that quickly in real life, you know? You're still having, you're going to still be kind of like your outdoor <laughs> vision when you're inside that building. So why are you stepping outside and getting blinded again? You know, I can't see the people outside my building because my eyes are adjusting. My camera eyes in my virtual video game are adjusting. And it... it <laughs> I just want to shoot the guy who's camping outside the door. You know, I don't, I don't want to get stuck, you know, looking at this and, and squinting my eyes and hoping that maybe my eyes will adjust to this visual world or this virtual world. It's just, it doesn't make for conducive gameplay. So you have a lot of things that are just improvements in some ways to the aesthetic, but also, you know, detrimental to, to fluidity of gameplay. And that's stuff like art design that, you know, animation, uh, you know, visual effects that just all around hurt viability for you know concise competitive you know, impactful now with the, gameplay so okay well dice for sure needs to i i hope they're working on that now with, when it comes to like art direction lighting i hope they're still focusing on that and also i hope uh they're really putting some hard work into rsp to where it'll be an easy shoe in I hope it's successful. So the next battlefield fight and the next battlefield right. will have it automatically right. from the start. And then maybe it'll open their eyes because in BF one, it really was is put together real quick, you know, was, at first it was, it was, they, they, they took their, and that was because of criticism, harsh criticism. Oh, yeah. They well, wouldn't they, have done they, it. If they, nobody they, said whatever, anything. Whatever backend program they have to, to, to create server instances, they took, they added like a kick function, uh, a rename function, like a ticket adjustment function, and then they gave it out to the masses. Like there was no yeah. features in that, you know. And they said, "Oh, okay, well, you know, before it came out, they're like, okay, we're going to release this with features that the community wants." They didn't do that. They just gave you no. <laughs> you couldn't even kick anybody that we've had since 1990. You know, via four plugins were insane. You could manage people based on like KD, and you could balance them accordingly. You know, you could you could prevent certain weapons from being spawned onto the map. You could have dynamics ticket values for the, the the amount of player count that you had on your server. I mean, there were so many good plugins that they could have you know taken inspiration from and tried to apply to BF one or BF five servers. Maybe we'll see that now, but I doubt it because I, I at <laughs> this point I think we all think that BF five is just a baseline, pump it out real quick kind of game. There's no they had to. I think well there was a big fiasco. I have my my thoughts on uh, why it didn't really have a smooth release, but. Hmm. I mean, that's probably has to do with Bioware uh, or uh, Anthem or whatever. But uh, now, now that you hear CEO talking about expanding right. the, um, the the overall development cycles of these Battlefield games, they want to make a new Battlefield game, right. but not for another two years almost. Uh, well, it could well, be. It could that's be great. Like, that's I mean, great. I, yeah. I hope they, they they take this time and they you know conceptualize the next Battlefield title, but focus most of their efforts on battlefield 5 make it a good polished game and so that way when bf That's 6 keep... or vietnam or whatever it's gonna be comes out 2143 whatever it is when it comes out it is a it is everything that battlefield 5 is built on and more in a new setting or you know whatever you know That's what I thought. Do it in. battlefield 5 was gonna be man but it's just like oh no, fuck, so we're, did, we're so starting else yeah we're starting from the bottom again. Like, oh, come on. Like, where, where's all the, the passion for that? But RSP is very, very important here for BF5. They really need to it's, it's nail. I been, mean, at least, it, at least it's, it's one of those things of where it. like, yes. Yeah. And, and RSP, I think, is a core foundation of Battlefield in the same, same sense that like server it. mods was a thing for Battlefield 2. And then they removed that with Battlefield 3, you know, and, and people were really pissed off about that. But people found a way around it, right? Like you have oh, yeah. things like Project Venice, which is, you know, not only do they mob the client, but they made their own server program. So you can right. run Battlefield 3 in its own instance with its own tweaks. And that's a really cool thing. So people will find a way to do stuff. But yes. There can be so many easier ways to do it if they just let you do it. Like it's the Frostbite is an incredible engine with so much potential, but they don't want people to access it because... I don't know if they're afraid of people in the community one upping the developers in terms of like quality or if they're afraid of people just not buying the DLC because new content comes out. But 
I mean, you can't mess it up harder than Bethesda does with their DLC right now, you know, <laughs> trying to monetize that stuff. So as long as you say, hey, you know, oh here's God. the official DLCs. We'll give you the, the mod tools after the DLCs are officially done. Have fun. That would be great, you know, because Battlefield 2, as far as I know, had a ton of competitive maps that were just done he did. <laughs> by the community. And they played yes. well because the community wanted to spend more time on this game. And that's great. That helps foster the community. Battlefield right now, 2 was born yeah. from mods. It was born yeah. from modification. Yeah, and I think I mean Project Reality is still a thing, right? Project like people Reality. Still play that. My God, that's like its own game, its own thing. Yeah. So so. Why, why, why squander your community? Why, why suppress them? Why, why suppress creativity when they can make your last so much longer? And now that they have things like cosmetics, they want the not, money. You know, Incarnate, they why, want well, it. Well, I know, I know, I know. But why not encourage people to let them mod the game? You know, make new maps, whatever. They and do, but people, as long be, as they be, make money off of it, well, then it's because great. they because they get to play the game now because there's more maps made by the community, then maybe people will buy more cosmetics because they're playing the game for a longer period of time. Like you're, have some you're too smart. You know? You're too smart, Mister Incarnate. Just, <laughs> this is this isn't going to work you, out in EA land. You, you want to you don't want to strange your community from the the actual. I don't know. I mean, I know I'm not a high up you know EA executive, so maybe I don't see the whole picture. Maybe that's not monetizable yeah. in the long run, but. I don't see the purpose in pissing off people. It doesn't seem to. I I know any publicity is good publicity, but I'd rather not have bad publicity. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So why not? I don't know. Well, whatever. But yeah, I, I, RSP's coming up. I think at the end of this month, or we'll hear something for sure at the end of this right. month. It comes right, with the Wake so. Island map that we played. Oh, wow. Wake Wake Island's gonna be the next map. It's been announced for December. So they said it's sometime around there. There's no like official date of when uh well, what are they calling it? They call it community games? Yeah, I think they changed it to private it. games or something like that again. Yeah. Yeah, it was RSP, that was too confusing. Private games, right. you can't do that because Bethesda fucked that up. So now you gotta do community. <laughs> Battlefield games. first, hello. Yeah. Oh god, imagine. <laughs> don't don't give them an idea, okay? I don't wanna pay a hundred dollars on top of like an origin hundred dollar a year. Th- Thing. oh my they can't do that yeah. so don't get they, they might do that oh my god that would be terrifying um but yeah they really need to focus on rsp they need to nail the they're they're doing it in stages i heard um right. i don't know what that means i hope they uh kind of scrap that whole idea and give us an actual like 1.0 full version of it not a beta version of it right. you know well, look, and I mean, they have all this time in beta forever so don't count that out <laughs> Shit. God, like let's it. take platoons yeah. from battle log and just mix the whole system then implement it into bf1 what six months later and then have it in beta for bf until bf5 i think just <laughs> incursions is coming on beta soon <laughs> oh, God. yeah i think that's still an alpha right huh. did it get canceled i don't recall i barely played it i don't know so okay um that's coming up here in about a month and now what are they gonna do after that uh are they gonna continue with a few more chapters or what do you what do you want what do you want for bf5 in these next two years what do i want personally yeah yeah let's uh rsp uh, right rsp right yeah rsp well that's coming soon tm um what else would I want from Battlefield? I just want <sighs> refinements of the gameplay. Just make the game play well, smoothly. This is the key word there that I look for. And I mean that in just every single aspect, you know, whether that's performance, you know, and no more graphical stuttering or glitches, um, whether that's me walking on the map and not getting stuck on every single rock, pebble, and piece of wood that explodes from some building. That'd be fantastic. I would like to walk, you know, in a straight line and not get caught on anything. Um, you know, it, it, that's in terms of gunplay where everything just feels seamless and like an extension of your actual body, you know, smooth transitions between, you know, firing stances or whatever that is. I just want the game to be enjoyable. And I don't think most people would say that Battlefield 5 is enjoyable 100% of the time. And that's not feasible. You know, you can't expect the game to be fun 100% of the time. But, you know, people should, when they think of a game, look at it and say, you know, I, ha- I have fun playing that. And I would say for the majority of Battlefield 5's first year, people would not say that. They would say it's mediocre. I mean, I said it was mediocre. I would say buy it if you can find it for 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Um, yeah. Otherwise, don't <laughs> waste your money, you know? That's a sad thing to say. 
too. Yeah. Uh, but um, That's, yeah. So 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 more content in terms of you know I know cosmetic stuff is the way to go. Fine, you got to do you got to make your MTXs do your MTXs. But uh, maps, weapons, and but uh, hmm. I, I say I, 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 no. Let me let me take that back. Maps okay. are a big thing. Do maps? Maps, 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 maps. Maps are the one. content that we're used yeah. to for sure. I want I, I want to see maps most of all. After that, I would say weapons, but weapons and vehicles done in a way that they are unique and have a niche. You know, so stuff that you're not just copy pasting something and slamming it into the game as a different weapon. <laughs> Slam. You know. <laughs> You want everything to be viable in some, even if it's my like minuscule way. You know, everything needs to be having a purpose. Don't don't just and, and like BF four is a huge issue of this, where like every gun is almost exactly the same as another one with like yep. a slight ROF buff or a slight H rec, you know, buff. <laughs> Something like that. Just you know, everything felt kind of samey unless you were at the top of the ROF chain or at the bottom of controllability. Um. Mm-hmm. and okay. they have an opportunity here with the spec system and they have an opportunity with the recoil seed to to make weapons feel you make fe- weapons feel you know like they each one has a purpose of its own so you know do it tastefully do it you know correctly and just make these good maps with the proper amount of weapons you know not too much not too little everything has a purpose everything has a has a, has a point of existing if you do that and then you refine the game as you go so you know vehicles aren't superfluous floaty nonsense on the side of the map that kill you every once in 30 seconds you know they have a point if if every weapon has kind of a point if every game class kind of is balanced out a bit because i think the classes need some tweaking if you work mm-hmm. on all these things progressively and in, in, in a year you have a game that is solid then you have a whole nother year to just churn out mtx you know churn out a bunch of you know, well, doing that nonsense. every week oh i know but then they can just focus on that once they have a base pool of 25 maps and 100 weapons great then you can just focus on microtransactions and people will be content with the game they receive and then they can you know might be willing to spend money on i'm sure it's cool cosmetic stuff i'm sure that but was until their the goal. game is at that point <laughs> no, don't do it i'm sure that was their goal but it looks like they fell back a, a, oh yeah a lot in, in oh, yeah. uh when it comes oh, to yeah. uh, developing the game and getting it done and released then they can worry about making you know post-launch money yeah yeah, yeah. It, well, and it's it's one of those things. Like, I mean, I'm sure you recall when <laughs> BF5 came out. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, it was a total disaster, and then so they were they were working on, it and they were trying to make it better. And there were some patches coming out, but the game still wasn't in a great state. But then, like in what was it March? I think they did the first set of elites, and they kept releasing elites <laughs> like every month. You know, so it's, they wanted to make they really wanted to make money quickly for but some I reason. Understand oh, that man. you want to make money on your product because you're yeah. trying that you're a business, fine. But the disconnect between the state of your game and the the fact that you're still shilling cosmetics while your game is in this state is, I mean, is that not embarrassing? Is that where is where's your shame? You know, <laughs> you shameless. <laughs> yeah, that's totally shameless. So it, it's one of those things. Like I am all for companies making money off of people who want to buy stuff in their game. You know, that's cool. That's fantastic. But you want to present the same message while you're doing it. So if your game is in a good state, then you can push cosmetics with a clear mind. You know, if, if your game's in a bad state and you're pushing cosmetics, people are not going to be happy with that because they see that as disingenuous. You know, oh, look at that. They're too busy focused on cosmetics than they are fixing the game. And I know that a cosmetic art team is different from the gameplay designers. Totally right. different teams. But hold off on it. You know, wait two months. <laughs> Wait till the game is in a better state. Then you can push all these cosmetics out and say, okay, here's the game. Yeah. It's in a great state now. Yeah. Here's some cosmetics you can buy now that the game is, you know, and then here's maybe one cosmetic for free. <gasps> wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, you know? oh, no. Yeah. So Whoa. Here, wait. Here's, here's an Look apology out. for you having to suffer through this horrendous first four months. Whatever. Instead, they do something like they did with the pit crew where people bought it for like, what, 10,000 CD? <laughs> no, then no, they don't took remind it me of that. No. charge 10 bucks for it. <laughs> What about like, my deluxe version? Oh, Are they oh, gonna ever? God, I'm so glad I didn't buy that. I'm sorry. If Where's you did. my service servants oh. packed for uh, the deluxe oh, owners? You, huh? you wanted your slightly red spray paid iron sights for the STG, which you already have ten skins for. Oh, here you go. We'll give you the receiver skin next. Yeah, yeah. Who thought of that? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, let's change subjects here real quick. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 
I'm going what, gonna go I into think, a depressant if I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I think um from what we're seeing in modern warfare, right? And the the slower movement. I want to cover movement. Movement speed, things like that before we uh will pretty much end the show. So let's let's let's, let's two more topics. Yep. Let's start with uh movement speeds, right? Yeah. Okay. So in modern warfare, we got a more campy environment because you know you, you got some slow sliding everyone walks pretty slow right and then um then you're comp- it, it really you know gives off a it's kind of hard it's a very to, it's a very passive game yeah it, it, it makes it passive, passive yeah, yeah that, it, it promotes yeah. camping and then you go bf5 and then whoa there's these challenges that promote camping there's these uh features that promote camping or staying mm-hmm. still um you get the bipod mmg meta that was going on for a while it's still going on yeah, um yeah, yeah. they're trying to make some nerfs with uh you know people on their bellies and whatnot right. that, that's fine but um movement seems to be one of the key things in developing a good competitive game and sure. um from what i've seen from like I, i've recently been watching quake with uh with a few people and dude movement is everything in that game um yeah yeah it's the pinnacle i think movement is almost more important than aim and, yeah which is really, really nice so cool. do it's you fun. think do you think there can be some improvements on movement here in uh, battlefield 5 or do you think they nailed it what it is right now um just movement well don't forget about bipods let, and other that shit well let me before i answer that let me check something on the website so i forget if you if you check like the BFI page, I think mm-hmm. on the general information there's a movement speed there. So what's what's sprint speed right there? Yeah, That's, movement speeds. Here you go. That no, I can't convert. I gotta use Google real quick. Sure. Uh, pretty pretty critical stuff here. Yeah. I don't know how fast it, that is and. Uh, are you comparing like BF4 and other games or? Meters per second to miles per second. So that's 14 miles per, or no, 13 miles per hour and 13.5. So the, the 6.0? Like yeah, yeah, the 6.035 millimeters per second sprint speed is 13.5 miles per hour. So like, Jesus. it's pretty, pretty fast <laughs> for running. So yeah. like, if you're doing that and you're doing that across the map, I mean, the, there's there's only so much you can do in terms of reality you know in in terms of keeping your game grounded in battlefield you know world war ii wherever you are and making it seem plausible so like people are moving pretty fast there and i don't think you can push them much faster besides people looking inhuman um so I, this is one of the things where like we're 2143 if that came around you can do whatever you want to because it's sci-fi right you know that's in the future with oh 2142 yeah yeah. Well, 20, if twenty one forty three were to come oh, out, oh, I see, I see, I see. You, you can create whatever you want to because there's no bindings on reality. You can say, okay, there's no helicopters, but there's you know these other vehicles in the air, but they they can be easily taken out by stuff on the infantry that you know we don't have oh. in the year twenty twenty, right? So you can balance things by necessity, not by reality, oh. which is really cool. So, so be it, it's the it, same as BF one. Wow. Okay. What do you mean? Oh, they mentioned the movement speeds are very similar. From yes. uh, BF1. I think they mentioned that yeah. in a patch when they were uh, closely going to resemble BF4 and BF1. Yeah, I teams. think the movement speeds have been about the same through every BF title. I think like the even like the, the, I like, I up, like like, it. the stance, like the, the, the model sizes have been the same since BF4, I think, too. Um, what do you think about the uh, ADS uh, movement? I, I think it's like insanely slow than what we were used to. For, for COD or for... Battlefield. For Battlefield for Battlefield. I don't. I don't think it's been changed. Honestly, I. I don't know the Ball values. ADS. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think that's changed really? between oh, Battlefield shit. or. I, but I don't know for sure. I, I think if Nocturne's still in here or maybe KHT, but I don't think it, if it's changed, it hasn't changed greatly. At least in my opinion. But I, that could just be feels. But I know like also like Battlefield Five or Four had different modifiers for bullpup weapons. So if you had a bullpup gun, you would move faster. Yeah. Um, Every, everyone's saying B- yeah I, I, i'm not talking with been. light in stock i mean let's just say right. let's just compare bf4 ads movement speed with light in stock battlefield 5 movement mm-hmm. speed ads uh, mm-hmm. is that the same 
Because uh, I, I again, like I, I really yeah. don't have a frame of reference at this point. I haven't played BF1 okay. a long time because I just it's not the same anymore for me to play. So I just resign well, myself. What to do not you? Well, that. let me rephrase that. Um, do you right. think it should Let's, be faster? Yeah. Pretty mm. much. ADS, well, I, ADS. I, I, okay, so so going back, I guess, to the original question of like, is movement better for a competitive game or just games? You know, in, in, okay, uh, FFG. yeah, yeah, and I, I think yes. Usually, you know, movement abilities, you know, predictable movement abilities, so like not like teleportation across the map. That's cheesy, you know, but like mm. generally, movement lends itself to more aggressive gameplay, which can be better for competitive gameplay because you need to typically in competitive modes, there's objectives, so you want to get around the map quickly. So you yeah. can get to these objectives, you know, and play the game at a pace that is both entertaining for people to watch and entertaining to play. And, you know, it's just overall fun. Um, that said, I don't think it's a necessity because every game has its own mm. kind of feel, right? So I, not every game needs to have high level mobility to be a competitive game. I mean, CSGO does not have a high level of, you know, move speed. It's, sure. it's kind of a methodical paced game, but it's still an arcade shooter at the end of the day. And it's still one that has a very high skill ceiling. And that's for a number of factors outside of just a few movement mechanic niches. You know, there's a lot of things that go into gunplay that just make for a very high skill game. So I, I don't think movement is a necessity, but it is something that needs to be done correctly. Right. So like it's <laughs> if, if you don't make your game feel good and people aren't going to want to play it. You know, no if your way. game feels clunky, people aren't going to be having a good time because they feel like, oh, you know, and that's one of those things where like, I think right now people are saying that uh, Modern Warfare 2019 has an issue with movement because yeah. you're, you're, how do I explain? It's like, it's like you just feel clunky sometimes and then you get shot yes. around a corner. And Especially when you reload, the reload, yeah. um, you can't run while reloading. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. It's very there, jarring no, for Battlefield players. Right. Yeah. There's a certain feeling of fluidity that you need if you're going to play an arcade shooter and you have certain expectations, you know, of mm-hmm. that fluidity. You know, if, if I'm going to play, you know, Hell Let Loose or Insurgency <laughs> or, uh, you know, like Rising Storm, I expect to be limited based on reality. If I'm playing a game like Call of Duty, I'm playing a game like Halo, or I'm playing a game like Battlefield, I expect to be, to be limited based on the, uh, the necessity of the gameplay. If the game expect, expects me to run 400 meters to the other side of the map to get to an objective, I expect to be able to get there in a reasonable way, you know, doing reasonable things that maybe aren't physically reasonable in the real world, but things that should not limit to me in this this gameplay world. So like reloading an MG42 while running at full sprint, probably not too feasible in real life, you know. 100% of the time, you might be a little bit, you know, this thing's kind of heavy and I can't get the belt to stick in the in the in right. the gun. But you need that to happen consistently in a game for fluidity because you, you don't want to slow players down. If they have to run 400 meters, the last thing they want to do is stop to reload an MG42 for five seconds before getting up and running again. It's just it's another thing that, that just hurts the pacing of the game. So anything you can do to make sure that pacing is consistent is a good thing for a game to have, I think, at least. Yeah, I, and, that and, go, and, that I goes think, in turn with just uh, the map building, you know, and yeah, you, oh, want yeah, that yeah, good, yeah. you want that good flow. You know, because right, if you yeah. start, in, if you keep everything the same and you only change one aspect of it, like like running speed, it'll right. ruin the whole flow of the map and it'll be a total disaster. Yep, so yep. you and really got to do it from like, the ground up. Um, you got to do it from the ground. Did you play Halo Four at all? No, I did not play. So, any. I want you though when yeah. it comes out. So so On Halo Four. Um. I think what they did in Halo 4, they gave every Spartan Sprint because Sprint was, you know, it's, it, it's okay. so common. In every single FPS game, they decided to give Spartan Sprint. So you would, you know, click in on the on the, the stick okay. and you would sprint your soldier, which was cool. But they kind of based all their maps around the ability to sprint. So when people said they didn't like Sprint, they didn't want Sprint because Halo 3 didn't have it. Halo Reach only had it on one ability. Halo 2 didn't have it. Halo 1 didn't have all these games. Like, it didn't belong it didn't fit the pacing of every other Halo game before it. So when they based everything around Sprint and then people said they didn't want it, they kind of had to think, how are we going to fix this? So they removed it from like the competitive game mode and every map felt terrible because the soldiers <laughs> oh, were moving no. too slow. And, and people weren't getting there where they should have been and it just felt slow, clunky, 
unusual, whatever. So what they did then instead was they upped the base soldier speed. So then the move okay. speed for every Spartan was like up by like 10%. And that kind of brought it up to like a Halo 3 level and everything felt better again. I mean, there's always like a fine, like, you know, it's, it's, you need to adjust with a fine tool, not just like bashing stuff until it, it works, you know, like it should, because th- you're not going to get lucky that way. Or maybe you will, but it's, it's not, not likely. Um, so it just, you know, fine tuning things, you know, and, and that's something Dice needs to work on. It's just, they, they're kind of still tweaking. working on that. They, they have been tweaking yeah. like the slide mechanics. They, they, they finally right, added right. the bind, but, the, but the key bindings of doing that. that. And they and need just, to keep you know, making small yeah. fixes, you know, they need to keep doing that, focusing on that and on RSP, of course. Those yeah. are my go-tos that they need to keep yep. working on. And, and, uh, and need more of those supporting. quality of life, you know? Yes. Yeah, keep supporting the, the stuff that just came out and future content. You know, like, don't... Just because you release something doesn't mean it's done. No, it's never yes, done. They, they keep tweaking it. Really need to tell them that that's not a thing, yeah. Okay. Um, I have a, uh, a couple more things here I wanted to talk about. I know cool. it's getting to, to two uh, hours here. Um... There was a, uh, what was I going to say? There are things that are pretty common at the end of almost every life cycle of a Battlefield game. And that is just a- adding these crazy ass, uh, either, uh, vehicles mm-hmm, that are mm-hmm. really spammy mm-hmm. or a gadget that does something that's brainless. <laughs> now I want if any dice people are listening or every I mean one of the reasons why I want to do the show is like maybe some of these dice people can hear some of us from the community. Right. Go easy, please, for the love of God, don't introduce like a B two bomber or something, and uh, have more carpet bombers or like the Elia Mormons that came at the end of Battlefield yeah. One or right. the UCAVs that came at the end of Battlefield Four. Right. Or mortar spam that came in BF one a little later on down the line too. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was really bad at the beginning, but um, the one that, that was just one of the things. Do you think they'll add anything like this, or uh, are I you mean, totally? I against? I would not doubt if we had some kind of like secret weapons of World War Two, you know, DLC <laughs> come out, you know, chapter chapter twenty two. Here's a jetpack. Have fun. I Jeff, it's, yes. it's dice. You know, have fun. They're gonna do what they're gonna do at the end of the day. I would just. Whatever it is, I would hope that it has a not only a purpose in the game, not just you know there because they oh it looks cool let's put it, but you know it has a reason to be there and it's it's done in a way that does not disrupt the game. It's just an. I like your point. I like your point that you made earlier on the show. It has to have a purpose. All right, it may look cool and but if if it has a purpose of being crazy and spammy, I'm not for that at all. Uh, right. I definitely and, don't want to be 29. And when, well, and when you implement something that has a purpose, you know, you want to make sure it it focuses on that purpose, but also doesn't punish other things. Yeah. So like, I, I know like KHT and Nocturne and a few other guys are very into mortars because they help dislodge campers. That's, you know, if you know, there's an MMG guy camping in the same spot, you put up a mortar, hit him twice with the mortar. He's definitely dead. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. He's yeah. not moving anywhere. So he's going to get hit. But my problem with that is that it ends up punishing players, you know, because most of the time I would not see mortars applied against MGs in place in certain locations. I guarantee I would see mortars being used in spam choke points, punishing players trying to get to an objective, you know, but they're stuck there for whatever amount of time trying to heal. You know, people get punished by gadgets not intended to punish them. So yeah, they gotta watch. They gotta. Yeah. I heard there's a knee mortar in the game files. Uh, yeah, there's a type eighty type eighty nine knee mortar. It's the Japanese mortar that they use in World War Two. That is, so we just it needs to be done correctly, you know. And I don't know how that exactly will be done. I have not thought about that because I am scared about indirect fire. I mean, you had people complaining about BF one RD trucks and spawn every day of BF one's life cycle. Nobody right. liked the RD truck sitting in the back of the spawn. You can't reach it. It's hurting you across the map. Can't see it even. It just damages you. It's not yeah, fun. I remember, Imagine that I, in, I remember, in attrition with BF5. Oh, you get your health chunked. <laughs> I terrible. remember um, one of the Jack Frag videos. He was talking about uh, indirect incoming death, pretty much. Like, you can't mm-hmm. do anything about. And that maybe there should be indicators anywhere like mini map or some sort of right. a clue that you're going about to die or get bombed or <laughs> anything like that what, what do you what do yeah. you think about stuff like uh, that 
Do you think I mean, they just need to cut that and just well, they've done a really good job it? of not putting indirect fire stuff in the game so far. Like I think the worst thing yeah, we have right? as an offender is piots right now because you can lob those pretty hard. But yeah, like, that's hard though. <laughs> yeah, that, that's hard, and the, and the thing in the map doesn't really help. Um, if you did some like UI thing, that wouldn't be bad, but I think you'd still be punishing people at the end of the day. Like even if there was like one of those like arty zone kind of like yeah. red zones on your mini map, that would yeah. be helpful to know. Hey, I'm about to get hit by a mortar, but also maybe I don't have anywhere to go. I'm about to get punished because I'm playing this objective, and I have to stay on this objective, and I'm going to hit by three mortars. Is that counterplay to your objective play? Maybe. Is that fun? Probably not. I mean. <laughs> I, I like, you know, engagements where I have a chance of fighting back against my enemy, or at least I should have had a chance. You know, maybe somebody fl- snuck up behind me and I wasn't paying attention. That's my mm-hmm. fault as a player, you know, that I, I have messed up royally because I wasn't paying attention. Or maybe I lost a gunfight or I won a gunfight because we got in a 1v1 gunfight and, you know, he beat me or I beat him. But I had a chance there to disengage or to, you know, f- fight the target that it was shooting me or damaging me or whatever it may be. But when there's a mortar or a rocket or something like this, is why people don't like bombers because bombers fly over the map at if they're a smart bomber, like 400 meters, and they're up there untouchable, but even your precious Fliegerfaust, and they'll just <laughs> drop 20 bombs on you, fly away, reland, you know, resupply, come back over, do it again Fair. in 30 seconds. You know, and that's that's not that's not fun to be on the receiving end of, and there's not a lot of skill on doing it either. It's it's not a there's 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 there's, there's nothing to benefit there. Like, there's other ways to dislodge campers or dislodge dis- dis- defenders, and they need to be you know. Those need to be done instead of just having people nuke stuff with bombers brainlessly or mortars brainlessly. You know, there's not a lot of skill required to do that. And I know that some people say, oh, most skill. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I know skill is an arbitrary metric and, you know, everybody has a different skill level that they're able to achieve. But that's that's not, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where you, 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 you need people to, I guess, kind of earn a kill. And I, I don't want them to struggle for it. But I do want people to have it's to. It's part of know, the challenge, right? It's part of playing. It, a video I, game. I want people to have to do something actively to get kills or to, to play the objective instead of just passively sitting back somewhere. It's it's not engaging gameplay for the receiver or for the yeah. benefactor. It's no, okay. it's lame. You know. Interesting. All right. Um. So yeah, they gotta watch out on that. And last thing I want to talk to you about was, um, test servers or have some sort of internal. Uh, uh what they have the P- yeah ptr the, kind of stuff uh, testing the battle, environment yeah. cte yeah, the, the CTE, community yep. test environment now they have said uh, officially that right. cte is not coming to bf5 right um, well, they have heard something the other day that it might in some capacity yes right that's what i want to discuss back, right yeah right so now that they got those dudes back um and they have extra time they got more time do you think that's a good thing to bring back CTE? Uh, yes and no. I think it's a good way of testing bugs because, or te- testing bugs and balance within a game. So, you know, you can launch something two weeks early and maybe it's a new plane, maybe it's a new gadget and you can see, hey, okay, this thing is not functioning as intended uh, mm-hmm. based on, you know, the general user base. You know, we thought it worked this way internally but seeing how general, you know, everyday Schmo Joe uses this weapon or this vehicle, we can tell that it's not functioning as intended. We can tweak this. That's a really good way to use it. But I also think it's kind of a bad thing because people, and this is going to sound kind of pretentious, but people don't know what they're talking about sometimes. People don't have, they don't see the, the grand scheme or they don't use things as intended. So, like, even though the BF5 subreddit has a lot of good insight sometimes, majority of the time, it's just dog shit. Like, I, <laughs> we 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 it's, talk it's, about that a lot here on the it's, channel. It's a total just like circle jerk of of you know whatever somebody whatever the Reddit hive mind says, and this happens on the battlefield forums too. It's not exclusive to Reddit. It happens everywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I know even the Simtic Discord has a little bit of circle jerk going on, and I try to break that because it's it's not. Okay. It's not healthy. You know, you, you cannot get stuck in a loop cycle of saying, oh, this needs to happen. Oh, this needs to like, No, you cannot do that because, you know, if you have a bunch of CTE testers and they're just playing this game and they're CTE testing and they give this feedback and they're only ending up getting the feedback from the CTE testers, then they might make, might make changes based on the selective group of people that in turn do not represent the entirety of BF5 or BF whatever that they're playing and they're testing. 
And that's probably a, a problem with game changers. That's probably a, a problem with you know any cl- closed testing environment where you have a, a select group of people that com- completely and totally come back to this this testing environment and keep giving feedback. And the feedback is only being given from these people. You end up getting a right. very you know repetitive, same hive mindy kind of feedback system, and nothing. Eventually, they all kind of become the same, and they all end up giving feedback that isn't genuine to the actual gameplay. Of, yeah. of what happens in a typical I, 32 b that, lobby. That's what that's what I'm trying to do here with the, with the show or the ballot. There's a lack of uh, you know, really knowledgeable people just like yourself, the synthic group, uh, competitive players, casual players, uh, people that I uh, I'm close to. These are knowledgeable people, and I feel like this show can really, um, you know, start getting, you know, lesser. I'm not. I don't know how to say it, but getting more people's voices out there um, sure. that sure. are passionate about the game and not like just a, a small select few of a game changer. So I think, you know, their insights are great too, right? But it's good to get a, yep. a big knowledge and, and yeah, having you, discussions you like this. That's yeah. as large as possible, right? Yeah. yeah. You want to get information yeah. and, and maybe, I, and then this is going to also sound uh, douchey, but not everybody's opinion is as valuable as everybody else's. You know, I, I'm, I, that's kind of a dick thing to True. say, but you know, if you have a guy that's played five hours of the game, he has a certain opinion, and a guy that plays five hundred hours, he has a certain opinion. And right. every opinion is important, but not every opinion is as valuable. If somebody says, "Oh, I don't like the STG because I got killed by a nineteen oh seven and it killed me <laughs> faster," you know, well, like, yeah, I'll take that to advice, you know, level five dude. But also remember that like your gun is not as fast rate of fire within 25 meters, you know, quantify these pieces of feedback, you know? So like you say, understand, okay, this guy, you know, has X amount of hours in the game. He's done X, Y, Z things. His, his, his feedback is respectable. And he's, you know, tenured, he's played this game. And and maybe this guy just joined the game. He, he's a newer player. He got a little bit discouraged. And that's what they did with the, the uh, TTK changes. in like November last year, they said a lot of the new players were yep. discouraged and they left because they were dying too quickly. Mm-hmm. They took a piece of feedback and didn't compare it to the rest of the players who play their game. And that's kind of what scares knee-jerk. me about CTE. It was stuff. a knee jerk. Yeah, it was a yeah. very knee jerk reaction based on a feedback, a select feedback group of people that they saw in their data. And they said, we got to fix this. And they didn't consider, you know, well, how, how are the veteran players <laughs> handling? Or, you know, how might this impact those players if we do make XYZ change? Um, and, you know, that's, it's just, I, yeah, every, every piece of data is, valuable and should be looked at but some are more respectable or more just more, more refined you know than others if you if you have more time in the game chances are you most likely have a better understanding of it that's not always true i've seen players with <laughs> three thousand hours and be a four that yes. play like a level five they got it two hours <laughs> naturally bad you know and that's needs to be accounted for and you know in terms of accessibility and it's hard to balance everything. I understand that, you know, not everything is easy to do as a game dev. You got to factor certain things against others and just try to weigh it out the best you can. But at the end of the day, I think you want to make your game as high skill and as give it a, as high of a skill ceiling as possible. You know, and so that way people can keep striving to get better and better and better. Then you have things, you know, maybe these high school players will eventually yeah. master the mechanics and kind of crush newer players. But if newer players come in, realizing that there's a lot that they can achieve and a lot that they can do and how they get better and you make that accessible you know through in-game data or you make that accessible through you know maybe like a ranked system this is all coming back to like other games that have done this and somehow we still haven't done this in battlefield if they do this so new players can come in oh, ease their right. way in and work their way up they've never done it level, then we'd have a you know it, it would be sufficient Yes, and somebody just said in chat, unfortunately, that, that assumes people want to get better. You're totally correct. Some people don't want to get better. Some people want to sit in the back of the map, bipod it with a sniper, bipod it with an MG, and just hold the trigger. I understand that. That's totally fine. But I think devs should be encouraging their players to get better because I think that's it's like a maturation of a child, right? You want your child to become more mature and you know be <laughs> self-sufficient in, in society, right? So you want your players to be beneficial to your game society, you know, be a, be a contributing member. Not of not of your society, but in this case, of your team on your battlefield team, so right? What are you What are you trying to say here? For I mean, how would you want the uh, test environment to be implemented? Are you saying because you say yes and no? Um, uh, <laughs> you guess, want certain skill, but I mean, I, I'm guessing you're just saying no. Like, 
you don't need it if it's implemented in the same way that it's been implemented that i want like like can be a four i want it to be implemented as a just a purely bug test bug fixing bug testing you know don't okay. actual gameplay feedback just see if something's broken that's how i wanted to see it if okay. they if they take this feedback and they start doing you know more with it and they they you know they, they start accessing different parts of the community and saying give me your feedback on this why you know why is this the certain way it is do you think you should be you know better or worse whatever Pro- then... frodo says don't open it to everyone only specific people can <laughs> are, are required to get in well, yeah i don't I, this, uh, this this, this I, I don't want to say you know i don't want to encourage elitism toxic. but uh you know that, that, that yeah, kind of toxic but it's like one of those things where we're like i I don't like game changers scares the hell out of me because you know, you have some people there that play. I know, I know, but it's, it's it's, a, it's probably there's there's people there that that play the game every day. And there's people that play the game when they come to company, every company needs some sort of feedback system. Right. And, and you need some sort of way to address that feedback, whether it's positive or negative. And that's just like a business requirement. So maybe that's what EA wanted to do to probably show, I don't know, show more light on the community and they split them up. So EA game changers are split up through many games. So I think that's the whole point of that. How about this? I would want if if a test server thing was was done, I would want to see individuals selected for it who represented okay. certain aspects of the community. So whether that was people that were competitive players or people that were community leaders and they could represent others in their field. So if you said, hey, uh, like I know Deity is like the battlefield guy for AOD. AOD is yeah. a huge community. And granted, they've been hit on the numbers since BF1 and 5 because they don't have RSPs, you know. There's it's no hard community to tools. maintain a community when you can't have a community to play with because you can't have right, your own yeah. server to play in. But, you know, if you would pull him and say, hey, Deity, uh, would you like to come and be a game changer so you can represent AOD and other larger similar communities like yours and, and see how like, you know, this RSP tool works out and then post someone from the competitive scene and say, hey, you know, we know that you have a history with 5v5s or 10v10s or whatever, and we want to see how you think these RSP tools work. You know, give us your feedback, you know, pull these members of the community that you know have a, a resume for representing certain other aspects of community. Yeah, I hope they listen, their, man. You know, exclusive feedback. I, they and then, they course, told me everything. I deity, I talk with deity quite a bit about the whole RSP right. thing. He told them everything. He's like, "This is what we need here, 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 and there." And then they're like, yeah, "Okay, have a nice He's, day." Like, we'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> they don't, <laughs> so that's they don't why it's big. It's, yeah. it's big. It's big coming up. Yeah, we'll see. I will. I mean, I I Good hope idea, and idea. I pray that they they implement it in a competent. way. But given their track record so far and their track record with RSP and BF1, I am not. I will be surprised. I will keep my expectations low and I will be happily surprised when something comes out that is you know, supporting and uh, detailed and just wonderful. But I do not expect that to happen. I expect it to be just like BF1 and I'd like to be proven wrong. I really would. But I don't think that's likely. And I think anyone that does is foolish because we've gotten burned in the past, right? And we've seen how BF4 or BF5 has progressed so far. We got burned. It's only now with Chapter 5 that stuff is turning around. But Chapter 4 was a debacle. I mean, and Chapter (laughs) 3 was not much better. This is the 5v5. We didn't know. They didn't know which way to go, where to cancel it or not. Like, and then you just release these small maps that no one's going to play. So, anyway. Okay, so. Uh, stream yeah. had a couple questions here. Uh, yeah. Barbazol yeah. has any thoughts about balance? I mean, yeah. we talked a lot about weapon balance, uh, sure. uh vehicle I, we can, balance. We can try to cover it. I, I can cover my personal thoughts. I don't want to cover other people's thoughts, but I could yeah. do a brief summary if that's kosher. Yeah, I mean, uh, we talked a lot about it in the beginning, uh, but do you think overall, generally, the weapons are pretty balanced uh, the, um bolt Damn. action rifles are terrible don't use them if you're gonna action, if you insist okay. on using one use the bolt action carbon on the medic class because you get infinite health and you also <laughs> are relevant at the ranges that you need to be and better at doing so so like the snipers you are one shot headshots yeah you have one shot headshots out the same five meters and 100 meters if you're engaging past those ranges then you shouldn't be playing the game. You should be on an objective. You know, just okay. go play a fucking farming simulator. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
but have fun and do something else. So the bolt action rifles are terrible. Bolt action carbines are good, but not like overpowered. They're just a good option for the medic. They're better than bolt action rifles. Uh, Let's see. Oh, rifles yeah. are okay, but they're not great. Use a semi-automatic rifle. SMGs are okay, but use uh-huh. cover, play smart. And you, if you play anything outside of 30 meters, don't bother. Just pop smoke and get closer. Uh, pistol carbines are okay, but they're kind of weak, but that's okay. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah. Um, anti-material rifles are meme but at least anti- they can actually kill somebody in one shot. So they're a better bolt-action rifle, but I still wouldn't use them. I mean, this is boring. Forget about it. Okay, I mean that's pretty good general analysis. Uh, also, yeah. people were asking about Firestorm. Um, you broke up yeah, there for a sec. A Firestorm. Mm-hmm. What do you think about? Uh, what do I think scrap, about it? Scrap it? <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> uh, there's a reason we don't support it on the website. That's all I'll say. There you actually, go. I, I, can, I can say more. Actually, I, no. I think it was a total waste of dev time. Um, it's a cool idea. And I, I think a battle royale done in a battlefield sense it could have been really cool, but you mm-hmm. can tell that they diverted too many resources into it. That could have been used for other parts of the game. Uh, it doesn't function well. It's a big well. map. It's a big map. It's it's a big map, and it's got a ton of cool potential. But uh, when you can't even get the loot system right after seeing so many BRs come before you, and then getting killed by your not competitor, but your but your franchise buddy in EA, you know, being Apex, Apex. Legends. And Whoa. immediately massacred in terms of being free to play, being more intuitive, being more fun to play. Uh, why? Why? Uh, so it just yeah, it, it, it was killed because EA said do it. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was a poor insight, or it was a poor foresight of desire. Like people, Dice or EA thought somebody would want to play this, and I know there's still people that play it. Like when you're yeah. in Australia yeah. and you're trying to play it and you can't find a game because nobody's yeah. playing it, obviously you mess something up along the way and whether that's gameplay fun or that's just your, your matchmaking system not working, but we all know that firestorm has died out and saying otherwise is unfortunate. And there's a lot of reasons for it. You know, there's cheaters, there's gameplay, there's the, the UI, there's, I, there, there's so many things that just contributed to a you know, overall at the end of the day, a waste of development time. And they've made what one update for it since. And they said they're yeah, they made a lot in like of, July, yeah. and they haven't done that yet. No, I think it's um, uh, it's over. So anyway, yeah, I, okay, I, well, maybe maybe it's not over, but it, it needs serious work, and I don't think it's going to get it. Not with the rest of the game being as it is. Yeah, I think they're going another direction, especially with these uh new successful uh, uh well somewhat successful um chapters that they're implementing, yep. and like kind of like a new direction style. Yeah. They're not advertising new things in Firestorm. Otherwise, they would have. It would have been the trailer. Nobody's it been in the, yeah. yeah, exactly. No, I, okay. I, I think either we'll see it come back in like another few months and like with a content update or we'll just see yeah. it fade into oblivion. Yeah. Uh, we got another question here. Newport mm-hmm. 100. Uh, can you talk about the fun playlist they keep removing? Uh, temporary game modes. Uh, temporary oh, yeah. playlists. Um what are your favorite game modes let's just go off of that i only play breakthrough right now honestly breakthrough. yeah i i think the conquest maps are miserable for a number of reasons mostly just the pacing <laughs> just feels boring pacing. yep uh, but you also have things like when you have poor visibility like with bf5 it has had constantly um mm-hmm. and up until recently there's only been some actual impactful tweaks uh the last thing you want to do is feel like everything around you is a potential threat so when you're in when you're in conquest enemy players can go anywhere like just anywhere so that means any single shrub any single piece of debris there could be a guy over there and usually that's not true but you always get killed by the guy you didn't see because you actually literally could not see him and that's not fun so when you play breakthrough you know that your enemy is in front of you in some way you know or maybe you're you're, they're behind you because you're flanking but they're they're in a certain location defending certain points so that kind of focuses the gameplay, makes it a little bit less chaotic, and makes it more predictable. So for me, it's more fun because I get to play, not get screwed over by, you know, Timmy Two Thumbs hiding in a bush with an MMG on the you know obscure <laughs> corner of a map. Like I, I kind of have a general idea of where people are going to be, generally. Yeah, no, so that's no, why I play breakthrough. 
Um, and Conquest was my most played game for like BF4 and BF1, BF3. Like I only played Conquest. I didn't. Same I love. I love Rush, but I didn't play it as much as I did Conquest. And now I, I'd rather play Breakthrough any day. Um, I don't think Rush has been very good in BF5. I think Breakthrough is a better version of Rush. I, I know some people don't think that. I think people there's this cult. It's operations. Following. It's operations from BF1. Well, well it's, it's operations, but it's 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 better thought out i mean rush has this cult following of just being so good but it's really not like you have one small objective that you have to get one person on to arm it with a you know quick time event and then get them to to hold the to hold the to hold the point like that is so incredibly choke pointy and stupid like you have 34 yeah. people or you know not 34 32 people or 16 people whatever the number is on the team why does everything depend on one person arming an objective no put the team near the objective and that's what breakthrough does right it makes conquest with a progression you know map progression game mode so tells the story two objectives. it's yeah, a great well, idea well, not it's even great. not even like the story part i care less about that whatever but like just you it's know you have two sectors you have a sector and you have a flag with a general radius not mm -hmm. everybody gets choke pointed next to this one stupid mcom that can get blown up by one bomber and <laughs> immediately it's all over you know breakthrough lets you spread out a bit and position yourself so i think it's a lot better in terms of gameplay than rushes rushes just it was fun, but it hasn't been done well since. I, I would say Bad Company Two was its best iteration. Battlefield Three wasn't bad. Battlefield Four took a lot of work to get decent. Battlefield One did it even have that? Yeah, it did, but it wasn't that great. I don't know. So yeah, I, I would say Rush that limited time game mode. The Rush can't playlist. Get rid of it. <laughs> get rid yeah, of it. can't get rid of it. Done. Okay, um, okay, okay. What else? What else? What else? There's uh, the a... outpost thing was kind of cool. You like liked the outpost, towers. huh? It was cool, Dang. but it didn't. They removed bombers. That was cool. Get rid of those. That was stupid. Um, <laughs> it was, yeah. But I don't know if it was grind. It was. It was different. Yeah, grind and fortress are terrible, 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 terrible. It. It was. It was oh, grind man. in particular was a filler for everyone's desire and the farm. <laughs> Not even the farm, but it was just this, this over obsession with Operation Metro. And that's exactly what Grind satisfied while it was there, was this need to have anybody, everybody in a close little corridor right in front of you so you could shoot blindly and probably get a kill. And, you know, you can spam grenades and get some points. You can pop a flare and spot the entire team. That's what Lockers was good for. That's what Metro was good for. And it's what Grind was good for. <laughs> but Grind is silly. It, it was, you know, it was a choke point extraordinaire. And I don't really think it was that great. I know the people that liked it, but I, I would take a hard pass any day. Um, and okay. then Fortress really required your team to be competent to take all the objectives, which I would never put my faith in. What's that, my battlefield first, team what's that first game mode in uh, Grand Operations? Airborne? Airborne. Yeah, what, oh, God. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about God, Airborne, God, huh? Terrible. Oh, boy. Let's, let's have everybody get stuck in this stupid animation that parachutes you from a plane, and you're <laughs> stuck doing nothing but trying to guide yourself through a sea of bullets getting shot at you while you're helplessly floating down. I'm immersed. Oh, <laughs> yeah, immersion is a terrible thing. It's just, oh, man. That yeah, so ruined air, air uh, Grand Ops yeah. for me. That ruined oh, yeah, Grand Ops I, I never, I, I, like, never yeah, I never played Grand Ops because it, 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 Airborne was that <laughs> painful. Never. No one it, would it, ever like, go for the bombs, it, and it's just like a yeah, pointless endeavor. It was a, it's a cool idea in theory, but the actual application of that idea is just plain abysmal. It just you can tell that some some intern churned it out say hey they're parachuting in they're gonna land on the ground and plant the bomb done concept conceptually great idea application like just actually playing it it's it's a, i mean <laughs> i it's that, that is an alt f4 like for you like, like you just said i mean it's not fun because your attackers never attack your defenders get bored they just sit on the objective you will get maybe three of the objectives if you're lucky but the fourth one is so far back the defenders had to be totally and completely incompetent or the attackers had to be so incredibly that much better and those things happening in a pub game is so rare that it will <laughs> almost never happen yeah and it's like the same thing where like in the total of the grand ops you had like every day would give you a reward you know for the next mm -hmm. map okay which cool whatever but only the last day matters in terms of whether or not you got the last stand game mode so because i haven't played grops since like the first two months of the game and i'm not intending to play it so i never will and the fact that only the last map determines whether or not you get last stand nobody has ever seen last stand like, i think i've played it once or twice ever 
I was so like, hyped for that when they announced yeah. that. I was like, oh, wait, if it's a tie, you get to play this BR mode right at the end. And yeah, we're like, and, oh, and there's, fuck. A, there's a circle closing in, and you got like you and your buddies <laughs> and one life. I was like, that's, oh, that's really cool. cool. That's cool. What yeah. never happens. So he, there's, and, and that that is the story of, of Battlefield 5 in a nutshell. There's all these good things that in just don't see use. Because you know they're 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 developed and they waste dev time on it, or I shouldn't say waste, but they 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 put dev time into something, whether it's a vehicle or it's a weapon or it's a uh, game mode, <laughs> and it ends up not being useful or relevant or whatever it is, you know, and and or they just time restrict it. So you have all these game modes that don't get to see the the day of light. Besides, hopefully RSP will make a comeback. Right. Um, I think maybe maybe you you have all these vehicles that are just outclassed by other vehicles, so nobody ever uses them. You have all these weapons that could be really cool, but people are just going to keep going to meta picks. Like all these new guns that come out have special things about them, like a grenade launcher, a suppressor, uh, an increased fire mode. You know, all these games that came out in time, or those weapons that came out in Ties of War have something about them to make them stand out. Your base guns, not really. Like all their specs are kind of the same. So maybe well, we'll uh, see some people go back and change that. Now that we're on that subject, uh, we have a question here from Wormlight. Mm -hmm. He wants to know uh, what are the best weapons in the game arguably uh, we, let's go through some of them on the Simthic website we got assault class so i know KH, kht makes a list about these things and i'll basically repeat this list off it's the top opinion, of my head because it's opinion. It, is, it is opinion but it is factually based in terms of relevance like the agm 42 great uh -huh. gun if you can hit headshots if you don't hit headshots don't use it your ddk is like 200 milliseconds with the double headshot at any range otherwise it's 450 milliseconds it's garbage don't use it if you can hit headshots, though, if you're if you're you know if you're a godlike aimer, use it. Wonderful, Breda, don't use it unless you can hit the burst every single time. G15, great for pub stomping, but not statistically great compared to the other ones. In, like the other ones are more specialized. G15 is very general. G43, great at range, probably the best 3-3 besides the M1 M1 uh, the M1 Garand. Carabin is more easily usable, but don't use the G43 or don't use it if you have the G43. M1 Garand is great, use it. And when Garen is great, did you hear that? I mean, Jeff? like it's it's not like <laughs> it's not that much better. I would say it's still good. Like mm -hmm. it's around the same usability. Uh, M one A one carbine is great. Nineteen oh seven is the best assault rifle. All the other assault rifles are irrelevant. Don't use them. Overall, for the assault though, use the semi-automatic rifles. If you're not using those, use the nineteen oh seven and don't play above fifty meters. I mean, okay. That's just, uh, yeah. Medic. Medic. Um. All of the SMGs are kind of good now. They they buff them all, so they all yeah, have yeah, their own yeah. little niche. Multiple so if times, you yep. if you want to pub stomp, use the Thompson or the Suomi with the fifty round mags. If you want to kill yep. one person in particular, use the Thompson or the Suomi with the high rate of fire. Um, if you want a really good all round gun, use the MAB thirty eight or the MP twenty eight. Both I like both of those really good. High velocity bullets, kids. Don't forget mm -hmm. <laughs> three forty five yep. to five sixty. Yeah. So you know. Oxymoron just said in chat, the MP34 is unironically just not good. That is correct. The best thing about it and what they advertised it before the game came out was that like it has a higher damage at end. But that damage only kicks in at 75 meters. At what point am I going to be tickling somebody with a 75 meter SMG shot? I shouldn't be. It, it It's... <laughs> it's just silly yeah so it, it's one niche okay, okay, okay. is irrelevant they should yeah so, and, and the same thing like the type 100 that just came out it has like a bipod and it's a laser beam but it does less damage by one bullet or by by it takes one more bullet to kill i should say so it does 20 damage to 25 oh, no, so yeah you'll laser beam people but like you're also doing one less bullet at range so if you're not hitting every shot even though it has better recoil you might still get outgunned so I would say your best are the ZK with a high rate of fire. Uh, your Suomi, Master your Thompson. Race. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone um, seems to be using that. Maybe. The yeah. 30 or rounds. EMP is actually good. The, the EMP the, is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's It's got some nice specs. And even though the rate of fire is a little bit low, it's still really usable. And then, yeah. yeah. So EMP, Thompson, Suomi, ZK, uh, MAB. Uh, those that's are all great. Really good. That's, that's yeah. great to hear that, you know, the, it looks like medic was really well thought out, and yeah. there's so plenty of things is, to yeah, like the the, the SMGs themselves with. are really well balanced. That's good the that you're listing so many. Yeah, it, and that's the problem with a lot of people that they they don't think the SMGs are good because they're getting a lot of yeah. you know they're engaging people at ranges where they shouldn't be engaging with SMGs. 
So that's where you use the medic smoke, you know, and you push up, you use cover, you use smokes, you get within that range and you have godlike hip fire. Like look at that hip fire, 1.2. And then you can put specs into that to make it like 0.8 and like not no spread. Like you can hip fire people with SMGs out to like 30 meters accurately. Hip fire. So you can move while hip firing <laughs> and hit, just laser beam people with the EMP. I mean, it is mind boggling good. So medic is really good if you play to the class strength, you know, if you use your smokes, if you use your infinite heals, you can dominate any server provided you can get within the range of your SMG. And the bolt action right. carbines are not bad either, but you need hey. to like get hit headshots. If you're not yeah. hitting headshots, Forget you're kind of losing out there. But again, it, it's a nice substitute for the SMGs on like the bigger maps like Hamada where, you know, you're just suffering because Hamada is terrible. All right. Um, support. Yeah, support. Uh, Shotgun I'm gonna be honest. Boys? I don't like. I don't like support at all. I think support is just lame right now. Okay. Um, okay. What do you think about shotguns here? Shotguns are good. Like they're they're, they're really good. good huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, the the drilling can like one shot people to absurd ranges just on bucks. Uh, the twelve G automatic can clean a room. The the was it the 1897 can consistently kill like a whole room people. You know, not as quickly as the twelve G, but still like chunk 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 chunk. So I like how good. you guys put the amount of pellets being, is that being shot out in one hit? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. one one buckshot shell, because otherwise it would look like, oh, seven damage, I'm not killing anybody, what's going on? Um, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, so the shotguns like are good, but you have to play to your range. If you don't do that, then you're not going to have fun. So that means either you're playing on maps like Underground, where you just are always in that range, or you're, you know, playing... Uh, I don't know if you were playing on Hamada, you'd only want to play on those back flags in the, in the castle area. You know, you wouldn't want to roam out there unless you had like the drilling and you want to use, you know, your rifle rounds, but even then you're going to get killed by other stuff that can shoot a lot faster. Um, your LMGs are good. Like LMGs do not have spread increase per shot. So like ah. they're very, very accurate, but they don't shoot very fast. So like your right. SMG can shoot 770 RPM, but it does kind of deviate your fg42 does not so you can outgun people maybe not at close range but in that mid range that sweet yes. area right there where like you're not you're not going to beat an sar but you're also not going to lose to an smg you're going to have this range of dominance with the lmgs so fg42 is a great like assault rifle kind of substitute yep. same thing with the ls26 uh your lewis gun is a pub stomper um maybe like your bren gun and your actually the madsen is like a better bren now it does less damage it at close range, but a five hit kill at any rifle, range, dude. no recoil. It is nuts. Yeah. Look yeah, at so that. You, yeah, you you want to use the Madsen if you're trying to like engage at longer ranges. It's so good. It's nutty. Um, MMGs, uh, I, I, they just need a little bit more maneuverability. Like, <laughs> just make them. I I mean, how's they they they, they cater too much to the to being prone? You know, let people move around a bit because if you move. You lose your ADS. And if you move too much, you might as well, you get a hip fire, you know? And that's just painful because then MMGs, you just, you have, you, it forces you to play incredibly stationary, which is not fun. MMGs you really are into that. is one of the things I think they can focus on when it comes to like movement, maybe uh, ADS. Maybe, I mean, that half I, ADS thing maybe could be a little more accurate. Yes. Yeah. I think or they just get rid of it. Up. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, well, but, I understand why they did it because all the MMGs so far have really good rates of fire, except for like, uh, what the the 1916 or 1919 A6 and the MG34. Like, 700 RPM isn't that great, you know. 600 RPM is not that great, but they have a huge magazine capacity to make up for it or other good attributes. So, like, they're not as a whole they're above average in terms of rate of fire for the entire game. So, like, they will outgun yeah, that's you ridiculous. Yeah. if they're oh, set yeah. up and ready. So, Absolutely. like, they're good. They just can't be. ADS all the time because then they just dominate everything. So like I understand why they did it, and I kind of liked it in the alpha and the beta, but they need to make them more flexible because right now they're just not flexible. Okay. okay. You know, so if you're gonna use one, um, the S two two hundred is my personal favorite because it just I like that melts one, everybody. Man. I like Put the high it. rate of fire on it, just laser people. MG forty two is really good for just melting people even faster with the twelve hundred RPM. But if you want like an actual MMG, MMG use the nineteen nineteen A six. Um, okay. And just new one. hold nice. the trigger down. Yeah. Or the darn. Good. The darn is also really good. Yeah. The darn in 1919. They're just bipod up, hold the trigger <laughs> down, and just melt people at, at range. Um, if you get the correct positioning, I mean, MMGs are just too good. But because 
because you don't often get that positioning or you get caught out of position, you get punished a lot. So I see. And then recons what? are well, it's useless. Okay. Yeah. Great. Don't Let's don't move use both on. these. Don't use both these. You use <laughs> the pistol carbines. If yeah, the carbines. Those, uh, those are interesting. I like both the C ninety six and the PO eight are good in their own ways. So C ninety six does less damage. PO eight has some better spec. Um. So just use whatever one you like more. But they're both they're both basically SARs with less damage. Like they have no hip. They have no horizontal. Uh, recoil the zh the zh a lot of people like that two shotter yeah the, the, the semi-autos are good but they're limited by mag capacity so mag if capacity, you you know yeah. if you miss you know a shot you're down you know one fifth your ammo that kind of stuff. um but they're if not god the if you're model god, 8 do it really yeah. good yeah the model 8 got I, buffed that that is even it it's like a 200 millisecond ttk at close range if you don't miss your shots it is really good now so if you if you are accurate and you can place two shots if within 50 meters you will drop people I would really recommend the Model 8 now. But don't use the bolt actions. They're garbage. They have terrible velocity. You know, their threshold for skill is if you don't hit a headshot, you're going to lose. Um, you know, for the Model 8, I would go right, left, left, left. But you can also go right, left, right. 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 Okay. That's, that's the way I run it. The hip fire is nice and close range, kind of sketchy situations. But True. Yeah, the Model 8 is, is fantastic. I enjoyed it. I enjoy that. Yeah. Even pre patch, I. I... Yeah, oh yeah, but now it's even well. better. So now it's even better. The, the only thing that's bad we'll about it, it is that it gets a, a funky, you know, like clip animation. But if oh, you so, either okay. jump or you um, gotcha. just choose an optic that is either one or two or one point five times, don't use a scope on it because if you do, you cannot load yeah. the whole strip. No, so, yeah, I hundred I, percent. Every time you see me play with the Model Eight, it's always iron sight or something yep. close range. And so iron sights really within fifty meters, you will dominate people provided you do not aim. Or sorry, provided you can aim you and can do not aim. miss. Like, <laughs> yeah, I use iron sights. I love it. It's fantastic. So the the recon uh, has relevance, especially with flares. The flares got buffed to thirty seconds. So like the you flares. Can really Don't play, forget to use yeah. the goddamn flares, people. You can really it's use crazy. those things. Three yeah. D spot. It, it's just it. It's huge for thirty seconds over like a what twenty meter radius. I mean, it's it's bananas. Twenty to forty. I forget which. But yeah, it's it's good. It's really like abuse those all the time your team will love you you will love yourself finally the the pistolas here uh they Mm -hmm. did overall did you guys update that already those are accurate those are accurate so i would say if you want to use pistols the revolver even though it keeps getting nerfed is still good because you get a one-shot headshot and it's kind of lenient if you miss a shot Mm -hmm. um the model 27 is generally worse do you try it already no, I haven't tried it, but just looking at the data, like the rate oh, of fire, it really punishes inaccuracy. So if you don't get that headshot and you need to make a follow-up chest shot, provided you didn't miss the first shot at all, then you kind of have to go, you know, you have to hope they can't aim. So I, I like it's really it's good slow. as like a long-range sidearm, but I wouldn't recommend it. Points. Revolver is generally better. Yeah. Um, People are hoping for that to be the new god yeah. gun. But no. it has a cool but animation, so, flippy flipper. It does. It does. <laughs> the, the revolver is still meta if you can aim, and uh, it's still kind of lenient. Nineteen eleven got buffed, so it's not bad. You can still use it. Um, have fun. It, it feels. It, it feels better. For it sure. feels better. It got a range extension. Did, did it wonders? So I would use that, or I would use mm. the uh, the ruby or the repeater pistol. Nineteen twelve, or if you're kind of. Like if you want to hurt yourself, but also really like the reward, the Type ninety four is actually really good. Like it has yeah. the damage model of the repeater pistol. It felt good. I've but been you using cannot that. miss. Like you have to hit your shots because no. you only get four shots to kill unless That's you hit a shot. It's different. But the four body shots, is, you, it gives you three good. to play with if you miss. Then you have to reload. So it's got the rate of fire of the ruby and the repeater pistol. It's got the damage model of the repeater pistol. It's got a mag drop, like a full magazine. Doesn't do some funky stripper clip. So it is good, but you have to not miss. Like you have to be. Mm-hmm. accurate and mm-hmm. you know play your targets correctly if you shoot four shots and you have to engage the other dude either you better hit a double headshot within that you know 25 meter range or you go and reload you know bring back the mars automatic <laughs> the mars i think it was like what 35 or 34 damage oh, to like sh- 40 oh, meters i'm not <laughs> good lord they have you know. that uh that one that was in the data mind it, it was a silence like Gas yep, pistol yep, yep. or something. There's a there's what a well the heck rod. Is, well rod. The files. Yeah. So I don't want to see the well rod, not because I don't think it's cool, um, but because if you scroll up to the liberator, I feel like it's gonna get the same kind of treatment the liberator did. Liberator <laughs> is a one shot kill with like a what six second seven second reload, and it doesn't even <laughs> one shot headshot to the head. So it is garbage. 
like there, it's it's a meme and it's just it's it's on the same level as the calibri of just a meme so what if the they make it I, what if they make the well raw into an obris that would be cool i don't think they're gonna do it because i think they they Why were not? scared of their own obris i think they, oh. they traumatized them but that'd they be cool need, I, I would love to, bring to back see back if it was if it was an obris that would be cool i love the obris it was a, a nice little close range skill cannon if you didn't choke yeah, um, people had so, so much cool fun game. with that. It, it really yeah. brought the content. Would, so yeah, if, and, if and there there's is also a, like a uh, rod man will be great. There's, there's there's a PPK that was in the files. The PPK suppressed that was in the files. Uh, 1911 suppressed was in the files. So, like, there, in the trailers, yeah, <laughs> in the trailers, stuff floating around. Really? Um, yeah. It's a five v five thing. I think that fucked all that up. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody just said in chat. Newport said, "Do yep. you believe the AGM 42 needs a buff?" Uh, no. It's it's really good at its niche right now, which is ready to fire hit M M one A one. Yeah, you just have to hit headshots. It's like you can two shot headshot anybody at any range if you do not miss. Like if you're accurate, you can dumpster people in 200 milliseconds at any range. That is insanely good. Just don't miss. similar to the mass the mass forty four as well. Yeah, the mass forty four is like a three hit kill. At like any it, no okay yeah it's a three to four hit kill. But what's nutty about the mass forty four? Is that it has the highest velocity in the game? I think if you put on uh, high velocity, huh? I think it's like nine hundred sixty. No, no, no. You put on high velocity, it's like nine six. Um, and it's like nine twenty. I think, I think that's the highest. Yeah, which is just yeah. It's almost double the speed of some of the sniper rifles. Like the Lee Enfield, I think is like five hundred, and you have a semi-auto French prototype rifle that never existed in any large capacity until its actual revision came out in nineteen forty nine. And it's the best sniper in the game in terms of velocity. Like, and yeah, see that that's kind of stuff that uh, bewilders me. Yeah. One of our friends here uh, that I had on the show, he loves this gun. Uh, Vince's graphic, the, the Moss Forty Four, is his baby. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, it's because of those high velocity bullets that it's, yeah, see, I, it's just so satisfying to get kills with it. You know, when you're dealing with a game that has you know projectiles, and some of the projectiles are kind of slow in this game, you know, like the yes. sniper rifles with G's, and you get a gun. That seems to shoot railgun at 920 <laughs> meters per second, you're gonna feel like you're killing people because you know your response is accurate. You know, like you get feedback immediately. I killed the dude and it felt instant and it feels good. That's why your velocities cannot be dog poo poo. You know, they have to be you have to make your players feel like they're they're you know hitting people. And I understand that you know, either that you do that with like tracer rounds, which a lot of the guns have, but mm -hmm. just when you kill somebody in three shots with the model. M44, and you just you just feel it, and just like pop, 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 and they're gone, deleted yeah. instantly. Like it, that, just it's so satisfying, it's so good. And well, a lot shoot. of guns in this game kind of give you that feeling. Overall, like we've listed, named many weapons, and I mean, just to answer uh, the user's question, I mm -hmm. I think it's pretty good in my opinion for weapon balance. I mean, there's plenty of things to choose from. Yeah, there's some I, variety. I would say the I know people are going to be like, oh, you can't say this, but the gun balance in this game is pretty good. I think the game, the gunplay in this game is maybe not the best it's been in the franchise, but it's the least of this game's worries, right? There are many other games, things in this game, like the vehicle balance, the map design, the art direction that needs to, needs to see fixing before the guns get tweaked. Guns as a whole have been doing all right. They've, they've been well enough as they are, and it's, you know... Maybe there's certain things I think people don't agree with. You know, some people don't like spread the recoil. Some people don't like um, the way certain guns are balanced as a whole versus other classes of guns. But they're not terrible overall. It's the least terrible of this, which is good because this game needs some plus sides. So leave the guns as they are. Keep putting in new guns that have some purpose mm -hmm. and focus on the other stuff. You know, focus on the maps, focus on the gameplay, fluid, whatever it is. But guns, they don't have to worry about too much anymore. Okay. All right. Uh, incarnate man. That was a. I hope that answered your question. By the way, <laughs> that's only a thirty-minute answer. But anyway, um, thank you for all the questions. Uh, again, incarnate. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, thank you for coming on. This has been. Fan I gotta wrap it up because I am just. I I need. I can need a break. We've been talking for almost <laughs> three hours. Yeah, three, hours three hours. My God. Uh, but for anyone who doesn't know, what we were talking about. Um. Incarnate is one of the co-leaders here at uh, Symphic Gaming Science. Um, they just released their I'm stats so website. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> Game Science. Uh, yeah, maybe I should have chosen something else. 
That's good. I like it. Oh, yeah, um, I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, Sim.gg is the new website where you can get all the weapon information, equipment data, and then vehicle data coming soon. PM. Mm-hmm. All right, and, all the uh, general information. There's a... Th- there's a Discord link at the top there, so if you didn't get your answer question, or oh Discord. my god, my, I see I'm getting fried now. If I <laughs> if you didn't get your question answered, you can also ask it there, and myself or uh, who else, KHT Nocturne. There's tons of people in that in that Discord that are smart enough with the files or the game data that they can read it off mm-hmm. and answer your you know general question. So community loves to help people by all means, please uh, ask us, and we will be happy to do what we can. But we don't know the answers to everything. Sometimes we have to do, we do have to look it up. That's all yeah. right. Huge Discord, um, over a thousand members, right? Almost two thousand. Uh, I think we're at like fifteen hundred now. Fifteen hundred, uh, and it's gonna grow. Yeah. We're, I hope so. I hope so. We're gonna get more games. So, uh, next game that we're focusing on is Apex Legends. Um, Apex. We had I, I made a preliminary spreadsheet for that a while ago, but uh, now we have a guy working on that data almost exclusively. So he'll hopefully have that up soon. I don't know. I can't give an ETA, but sooner rather than later, hopefully. Um, and we know there's a bunch of demand for COD Modern Warfare, but I'm having a hard time finding a way to extract that data easily. I talked with the guys who used to do it back okay. at Den Curson. That was mm-hmm. like COD 4 all the way through World War II, um, but he is burnt out on doing it. And uh, as far as I know, he did it in a very time-consuming way of checking the actual game memory with uh, a tool to like check hex values, which is very time-consuming. Yeah. Um, well, so I, that was I, a labor I of love, but best. hopefully we'll find a better way. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I mean, Modern Warfare is a game that people want to see a lot of, and I want yeah. to be able to help with that. For sure. That's excellent. So all that information on the Discord yep. and yep. on uh, sim.gg. Yep. Dude, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, anything else you guys want to announce or anything like that? Uh, for me? No, not really. Um, You can find me on Twitter. You can find Synthic on Twitter. Uh. Oh, your in Twitter the Simthic is that a? It is not, actually. So I just talked is... with the guy who has it right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, <You haven't> posted. <laughs> so we, since yeah, we need to update that. I know, I know. It's it's been a while. Um, <laughs> so I I talked with the guy who has the credentials for that. So hopefully we get that up and running and whatnot. Uh, that would be fantastic. So we need to rebrand that because we are not Simthic. We are now Sim. Fantastical little change. Um, so yeah, so that'll get handled. But uh, in the meantime, I post most stuff on my private or actually my public profile my personal profile uh, if anything changes there but uh, you can always find updates in discord that's where we're most active and of course you can just check the website occasionally and might have something new there to surprise you with <laughs> all right uh thank you so much chat uh thank you for the questions uh thank you for all the new followers today uh and the raids i appreciate the resubs man you guys have been great i hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the battlefield show uh, next week, we got uh, the reschedule of Daddy Drip Drips, another competitive player coming on in here. Heck of funny guy. Heck of. And uh, he's going to be on Thursday at uh, 8 p.m., I think. And then uh, after that, we're going to have Daz coming. Sore Daz, you know? Uh, cool. Let's see. Where was he? Oh, he was just on here. Yeah, here we go. Daz. Daz will be here uh, that next Saturday. We're going to do same time probably 5 p.m actually a little earlier i think 2 p.m uh pacific time since he's on the east coast so daz will be uh on the battlefield show then okay all right then wow. uh that's pretty much it guys if you have any more questions uh again go uh go to the uh, discord at, uh for for sim or you can come to the stream lounge and ask your questions there okay yep, feel free to harass me i'll yeah. be here all night <laughs> <laughs> all right guys stick around we're gonna go raid somebody here uh in the battlefield section stick around all right well have a good night thank you for having me on appreciate it no problem have a good night guys bye bye